Okay, so I should probably be, like, here, right? Like, actually awake and live and all that other fun stuff. That's how I should be, right? Okay. Ah. How's everybody doing? 
said no work tomorrow. Ooh. Good shit. Good shit. Working tomorrow is cringe, so don't do it. Just just choose not to. Choose life. I think. I don't know. <laughs> you just learned that they're making a uh, fifth God's Not Dead on Pure Flix. Oh, boy. Kenny says, I feel so old. My youngest turned 15 today. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I feel old, too. You almost passed out in the shower, so you're feeling upside down. Oh. Has anyone already mentioned Lindsey Graham uh, introduced a federal abortion ban bill? I saw on Twitter that that had happened, uh, but I haven't covered it yet. Mainly because I don't, I, I don't see it going anywhere, and it's not the first one that's been proposed. Federal abortion ban has been like a Republican wet dream for ages. Said he would if the GOP take control of the midterms. Oh, so he's a coward who thinks that the only way he'll get anything passed. Like, he doesn't think he can write a bill that Democrats would agree to. What a fucking coward. What a whiny little piss baby. Like, that just... That just strikes me as weakness. Guys, I'll introduce this legislation, but only if I know we are going to win. I don't like my ideas being challenged. Oh, that's how I feel that goes. Is it possible he's trying to sabotage his own party by going full-on extremist? Mm, no. No, I, I think he believes this is a spot on what he should be doing. Yeah, it doesn't want to compromise. Like, okay. I slowly start to come around on people who are anti-democracy sometimes when I see, like, shit like this. I'll never agree with the position because I know as a matter of function, it's way better to have people coming into agreement on the things that they want when it comes to policing themselves as opposed to, you know, whatever one party happens to think is right at the time. But there are those times where I get very, very angry, and I'm like, I can understand. I know why Anakin turned to the dark side. I get it. That whole arc where he's just like, I'll make people do it. I'm like, no, I... Mm. He's wrong, but I can feel that energy sometimes. Didn't help that the Jedi were fucking hypocrites. True. You mean like the Democratic Party? Creating half of the monsters they want to avoid. The Democrats are gaining ground on Republicans. I would hope so. Hmm. 
Where the fuck is this dude? Not today, Satan. How's it going, Ryder Ryu? At work, bored. Hopefully, we'll start your new job soon. Ooh, what you doing? What's your What's your new job gonna entail? New jobs are always exciting. Now you work as a data center manager, so you'll be working uh, for the FBI as a contractor. Interesting. Very interesting. Bravo Learn, thank you for redeeming your points for an owl. Here's the ridiculous lesson about Anakin from Xander Hall. I said that Anakin's like a young boy falling down the alt-right rabbit hole. Uh, kind of, sort of. If the alt-right rabbit hole only had one influencer, then yes. Like, it's not a bad take. The only problem is the alt-right rabbit hole involves you being oppressed on all sides as opposed to having a single person change your mind. Like, for Anakin, he had one person corrupting him, and only ever one. I don't hate the analogy. I just think it needs some work. Sirs, I made you into a Sonic meme. That is that is disgusting. Can I see it? <laughs> Maybe Lucas could have had better writing for the prequels. I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that the while the writing of the prequels, in terms of dialogue, was hammy and bad. The writing for the prequels, in terms of like storyline and plot structure. We're actually really good. Bitch, I'm not going to kill you. But I am now. Fucking hell. Hmm. 
How is it that Biden's hair sniffing is more objectionable than the pussy grabbing? Because he's a Democrat. It, that's that's all it is. Like the the problem is is that we have this issue where we try to look for the logic in it, but we're never going to find the logic in it because there was never logic in creating the position in the first place. It is very difficult to reason somebody out of a position that they did not reason themselves into. That is built on a combination of either knee jerk reaction or. Other issue. What is... I need to take that. Let's go this way. Let's go this way. Four people have died to me so far. I need to get more people dead to me. So the prequels could have used the same treatment that New Hope got. And been saved in the edit. They cut a lot of the cruft of that movie. I saw that video. A new hope was saved in the edit. <laughs> I I think I go this way. I think I go this way. Yeah. Hair sniffing. Yeah, there was a thing where like Biden. It was a meme for a while to find pictures of Biden uh, sniffing young girl's hair. See, do I? Yeah, I take that. We take those. Man, I like too much of this. Are you familiar with Chris Mooney? No. I am not. I won't defend the hair sniffing, but we can acknowledge there's a huge difference between hair sniffing and Trump doing sexual assault. Oh, yeah. There we go. I got that one. I really like messing with the physics in this game. Probably eat these. <laughs> okay. Beep. Oh, I don't need to go that way. I need to go this way. You have a sports question? I I am not going to be able to help you with that question. Um, do you find it weird or even annoying that people watch sports to try to act like a coach yelling at their team through the TV screen? No. And you care about something, you will call out misplays. I do that with League of Legends. I find it annoying in the sense that uh, I don't like listening to people yell about sports because I don't like sports. But I understand the sentiment because when I when I watch people play League, I do the exact same thing. Uh, 
That uh, guy's probably wondering why I didn't leave well enough alone with this fucking car. Are we really going to the house? Is that where everything's happening? Anticlimactic, but... Interesting. Interesting. Nobody has... Li oh, somebody's been here. Good to know. Now, nobody has a reason to check this room. Oh, God damn it. I fucked that up. Oh, looks like we're going up here. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> What's going on over there? Toki the Sponge, thank you for the follow. Let's see what's going on here. Five people. Using the chest as bait. There's about to be four people. Yep, that's crossfire. That's a shield broken. That's another shield broken. That's a dead person. Bet. There's a fight still happening. Interesting. That's another dead one. And it happened very close to here. Carmody, thank you for the follow. Hmm. All right. Interesting. They're using a Nimbus Cloud. hear anybody anymore. I wonder why. Hmm. Come on. Let's go with... I don't want to make any more move. I don't want to make any more moves. If I make another move... Are we all just standing still? Is that what's happening? Somebody just opened up the uh, chest over there. Nope. 
You got me. I missed once. I missed. God, I used the bait correctly and everything, and I missed. Yep, and then that's the end of the fight right there. You died because you were you were weakened by me. God damn it. Oh boy. We were close. We were very close. I'm comfortable doing one more before doing topics. Yeah, Stoff is right. Rat pies are interesting. Was my atheist perspective on the Church of Satan? Uh, a lot of times they do tend to fight for religious liberty. Like, liberty from religious shit. Which is useful. Check fan art for the Sonic meme. Let me check. Oh, I see. You mean these Chaos Emeralds? <clears throat> so you thought the Church of Satan was made to piss off Christians who are always pro-clutching? Troll the trolls. Less troll the trolls and more create an environment where it's harder to be a bad troll. Oh. Oh, that feels good. My back feels a little better there. I pulled my back this morning. It was not fun. Welcome to the fucked up back club. Yeah, no, you pulled yours yesterday. That was not fun for you either. Want some popcorn? No, I'm good. Shit, 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 oh, damn it, damn it. Ah, I saw it. I saw them and still did not get away in time. 
Angry. Angry. That sucked. Oh well. Oh well. Let's go over here. We have 50 battle stars we can use on bonus rewards. Let's get these then. Evan Sen, thank you very much for the tier one subscription. I greatly appreciate it. Blork the Destroyer, thank you for resubscribing as well. I appreciate it. What have you walked in on? Uh, I was just playing some Fortnite. He's all. Red Joker, thank you for the 100 bits. Getting us to a, uh, to a hype train. Okay. I think we'll probably be getting to, uh, to topics a little quicker today. You have the feeling Surf also plays the Diablo series? Yeah. I mean, played three and a little bit of two. No 10 hour stream tonight. Not my plan. So yesterday was an 11-hour stream, and I don't want to do that again. How many cows did you butcher? None, because we didn't go to the cow level. Be right back.
And I am back. What is going on here? I see conversation about Lovecraft. And bad stuff. He has a raisin. He has a raisin? He does? Who? One of your boyfriends is scaring you? That's not good. He's being suicidal again. I won't respond. Ah. Uh... You should have seen his messages. No, Anubian. You are not responsible for him. I hate to say it in a way that may seem mean, but somebody else's life is always in their hands, not yours. You cannot take personal responsibility for another person's life. Not healthy for you. He's done this before, then it's doubly not healthy for you. Sure, fire sparks. Again, I don't mean this to sound like dismissive or anything, because I, I don't mean to sound that way. But the fact of the matter is, if somebody is doing that, that is not healthy for them, that is not healthy for you, and you should not be expected like you should not be expected to deal with that. That's not healthy. It's not safe. Pandora, thank you for resubscribing. Yeah, there's that. Uh, there's that thought as well. Like that can also be somebody trying to emotionally control you. That's not fair to you. He has DID, self-diagnosed or professionally diagnosed. Also, faulty rac uh, Rooney. Thank you very much for the follow. Professionally, okay. Stephen said, I happen to think that Trump was a horrible president, a horrible person. I think he actually engaged in criminal behavior and certainly felt he was a sociopath. Oh, fair enough. Tremendo. Edit 49er, thank you so much for the raid.
I can I can agree with not grabbing a wellness check sometimes. There's a lot of times where it can do more harm than good. So also, are you are you supposed to call the police in Argentine? Yeah, that can create another issue as well. Tremendo. Witchpunk, thank you so much for the raid. Why do we get two back-to-back -back raids? Jesus fucking Christ. Holy shit. How are you guys doing? I think if this is something they've done before, then it may be a good idea to just do what you can to console yourself. The fact of the matter is wrapping yourself up into a panic isn't going to help you. And if they love you, then it's not what they would want either. Though, if they end up wanting that, then no. Also, I haven't heard that Canadian police are just as bad there. First, I've heard of that. PC Luvenpath, thank you very much for the follow. Okay. Child, I love you. It's time to stop. You can link articles and video requests about the wellness check fiasco. I, I get it. It's fine. Child, it's time to stop. It is time to quit. I'm sorry about what happened to Thumper. It's fine, Fire Sparks. It's fine. Which pet is it? Uh, right now, Terror is being very needy. Very needy. No, it can't be Thumper. Thumper is dead. Yeah, Thump uh, Thumper got an eye infection, and it, it took him very quickly. No bot flies in your pets? Why would I have bot flies in, pet, in, in my pets? That's weird.
but no, I think I think Princess Morningstar's suggestion there is also very likely to be one of your good uh, to be one of your good options. Yeah, typoing happens. He's fine. He's fine. Stop says, as someone who has had to help a friend with DID, this is the method I use because that friend had an alter that would continually trauma jump at inopportune times. Uh, I help them figure out a decent coping mechanism for dealing with their trauma after they calm down from a meltdown, and they haven't had a problem with trauma dumping when it's inappropriate to do so. Yeah. Marissa, do you want to send me that video with uh, Greg Locke? I feel like we could have a little bit of fun with that. Yeah, Greg Greg Locke's not been a uh He's not been a bastion of of smarts for a long time. Some preacher you talked about in the past crying about Cult of the Lamb. Oh, which which one? That sounds fun. Nope. Child, stop. You are the neediest thing. It's Ray Comfort? Oh. Oh boy. Oh, my favorite. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Do you know how little that narrows it down? I sir, just saw you were live, been streaming long. Uh, not super long. Only about an hour so far. Only about an hour so far. Didn't Shark of the Surf do a video on that? 
No idea. I don't watch Shark or the Surfs. Neither of them. This is, Nintendo's actually directing us to work on farms. I saw that. BBVT, thank you for redeeming your points for an... Uh, you fucking DJ. Trying to figure out what artifacts I want to put in my uh my deck. Since I'm thinking about it. I found it at a shark. Let's see. What deck? Um Marin? Marion? The green red artifact uh girl from Dominaria United. Someone may I think we're gonna come. Not come. No, we're not gonna come. We're gonna cover some rake companies. Well, thing we're gonna do. Ugh. But we'll talk about the stuff that we have here first. Okay. Your friend borrowed all your Sotsky cards from your Weissword deck and never returned them. Like Sotsky Kiryuin from Kill the Kill? Is that what you're talking about? Okay. Problem, I could not tell you because I've never built that deck. When I played Kill the Kill, I played... Uh... I played Ryoko and what's her face? I can't remember her. Mary, a scholar of antiquity. I think so. Fairly certain. Mako, yeah, yeah. I was I was bouncing between either playing Mako's family in yellow or playing Ryoko Mako, and I went Ryoko Mako. God, okay. No, it's it's time to go. It's time to go. Go away, child. Time to leave. Nope, hold on.
Okay. I have a squirt bottle now. <sighs> Anubian, you want help with the Obun deck? Have you done any uh any changes to it yet? <sighs> no? Okay, so it's just the precon. What budget are you working with? What's an Obun deck? It's a $20 pre-constructed deck that uh, deals with lands. About $30. Ah, give me a sec. Give me a sec. Let's take let's make this let's make this somewhat quickish. But I can probably do this real quick. Okay. Let's see here. <laughs> Alright, let's take a look at the deck itself. What's in here that doesn't need to be in here? All right, <clears throat> Root Grazer. That's fine. Seder Wayfinder, top four, put a land in your hand. That's useless. Out. One Seder Wayfinder. Uh, if you control six for more land, Sylvan Advocate gets... Oh, man, that's useless. Sylvan Alt Advocate goes away. Abzan Falconer is fine. Rejuvenator is fine. Evolution Sage is fine. Fertilid is fine. Living Twister is fine. How's it going, Bonbon? Bon? Spring Louvre Druid is fine. Duskard Caffin is fine. Yavamai Elder is bad. Goodbye, Yavamai Elder. Armorcraft Judge is not good for this deck. I don't know why he's in there. You get Miria Angel. We'll think about you. Actually, no, Miria Angel, go away. Miria Angel's part of a go-wide strategy. We don't give a shit about that. <laughs> Minna Den Wildborn. You're fine. Scare Tiller! Put a land for hand. Uh, it's fine. Actually, no. Scare Tiller's awful. Because that's when he enters the battlefield, right? Nobody becomes tapped. How the fuck are you going to tap him? No, get that shit out of here. We have no way of reliably tapping him, so he goes away. Trove Warden. How are we going to kill Trove Warden? How, how the fuck are we going to kill our own Trove Warden? No.
Where, no, Trove Warden's going away. That doesn't need to be in here. Beggar of the Wilds. For next moment counters and target land you control, that land becomes a zero elemental creature with haste. Still land. No. That goes away because we only want to fight with one land at a time. We cannot risk our lands to fucking swords to plowshares all the time. That would be stupid. Spore Mound is just bad Scoot Swarm. Goodbye. We'll keep Acidic Slime in. Who cares? Uh, and it's Battlefield Bolster 2. Whenever you attack with one counter attacks, tap target. That is completely worthless. Which ones are we chucking so far? I have a list right here. Elite Scale Guard is going away. Fuck you, buddy. Embodiment of Insight. Whenever a land you control enters a battlefield, you may have target land control become... You're funny. That is a shitty card. And it leaves. Goodbye. All right. Nitros. Thank you for redeeming your points for an owl. Owl. Never. Fractured Psyche, think of it the follow. Spormound's gone. Geode Rager is fine. Geode Rager's funny. I like Geode Rager. Let's see, when it, uh, you may exile target non land permanent other than an angel. Uh, Admonition Angel's wonky removal, but I don't hate it. Voltani's good. That's good. That's good. Beanstalk's good. Emiria Shepherd is good. Uh, Mirror Shepherd. It's about to return. They're gonna leave Harker Gregor to your hand. Yeah, it's good. Omnath, good. Sandstone Oracle is fucking awful. Why would we? Why would we have that card in here? Who? Who designed this deck? Who put a Sandstone Oracle in here? That leaves. That goes away. Condemn. Uh, what is that doing in here? No. Oh. No, it goes away now. Bye. Ground assault deals damage to a creature equal to the number of lands you control. It's sorcery speed. Why do we want sorcery speed removal? We don't. Get out of here. We have white. The far wanderings is, is okay, I guess. That can protect a land, I guess. Three damage. Return to a creature from a graveyard. Does it hand tap a creature? That's fine. Realm regrowth is fine. Circuitous root. Get that shit out of here awful fucking card. That's fine. Planner Outburst. It uniquely good in this deck. <sighs> Struggle is fine. Sylvan Reclamation is expensive and I don't like it. I I do not like removal that costs five. That is obnoxious. I, I don't like treacherous terrain. What the fuck is that doing in here? Hoomst. 
Who chose that? Go away. Banishing light. Banish... Why is... Goodbye, banishing light. Good Goodbye. Fuck off. Stupid goddamn card. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, cool. Okay, what the fuck is going on with this goddamn land base? Uh, let's see here. Bounce land is fine. Get get rid of every goddamn guild gate. What are these guild gates doing in here? Get no. Guild gates are dumb. Do not put guild gates in decks. No. Goodbye, Gruel Guild Gate. Goodbye. Selesnia Guild Gate. Goodbye. Fucking where's the other guild gate? Where the fuck is it? Boros Guildgate, no. Bad fucking lands. Get out of my decks. Get get the fuck out. Cryptic Caves is fine. Evolving Wilds is fine. Everything else I think we can, we're okay with right now, right? Needle Spires is bad. This is a bad utility land. Why did they put it in the deck? Good Goodbye, fucker. Leave. All right, cool. Let's let's update this preview. What are we at now? Seventy-eight cards. We can we can make some changes. Okay, cool. Ah, uh, and my cat's fucked up my. We put guild gates in Keen of the Nine Fingers, okay? We don't put guild gates in fucking Obun. They go away. Bye. Dumb fucking cards. Get out of decks. Go away. Okay. Thank you, Fire Sparks, for redeeming your points, friend. Nada. You fucking degen. All right. Let's take a look here. Land wise, this jungle shrine. Is also leaving. Goodbye, Jungle Shrine. <sighs> and you know what? Actually, no. Crypt of Caves. Goodbye. All right, 31 lands. Let's first fix these lands. Very, very simple way to fix these lands. Dominaria United Dual Lands. Let's take a look here. I need images. All right. You know, pathways, I want... Okay. Thoughts on the bounce lands that bounce an untapped basic? Fucking horrible. Get them out of my decks. Uh, for Obun, you want to run all the bounce lands you can. I already have the bounce lands in here. That's not the bounce lands they're talking about. Yeah, I already have the bounce lands in. They're they're there. No, we're Why gonna. Are you only running 31 lands? Because I just I I did the cuts. So Radiant Grove goes in, which means in. Radiant Grove, with uh, with a grid ridge line. Add card. 
All right. No, you get over here. Okay. And then we need the Boros one. The Sacred Peaks. Because we get rid of fucking guild gates. We have better options now for lands that come into play tapped that can be searched with core cartographer. You also want to run uh, two, uh, two of the trials. Uh, don't have the budget for it. Oh, you working on a budget? $30 budget. And I already know where some of that's going because $7 of that has to be Avenger of Zendikar. You can run it without Avenger of Zendikar. It's, it's too good of a win con, though. In Obun, it's just a secondary win condition, which is fine, but like you could also just run uh, Scoop Swarm, and Scoop Swarm is cheaper. Oh, I'm going to be running both. Well, yes, but that $7 could go to something else. It could, but given the... Especially considering that Obun makes um, an XX, where X is the number of lands you control, or yeah. gets XX or something like that. I forget his exact wording. Every time a land comes into play, you put a 1-1 uh, one, one counter on a creature, and then... Uh, in combat, you animate a land, and it becomes as big as he is. Yeah, so it's pseudo Voltron because you're always gonna put the one one counters on him. So there's two ways to run Obun, and that's that's lands matter, and then lands matter. Um, my commander doesn't, and lands matter Voltron. Yeah, I'm gonna be leaning this more into the lands matter, my commander doesn't matter as much territory. That way, like, if Obu needs to do his funny haha thing and kill somebody, he can. Yeah, I, but for budget-wise, it would be cheaper to run him as Voltron. Most it, of the Voltron cards, like Fire Shrieker, are like 10 cents. They are, but I don't think they're going to be necessary for the way that I'm planning on getting this. Um, so the first thing I'm doing is I'm knocking out all the Badlands. Uh, Thread of Nemesis, thank you for the follow. Uh, and then just very quickly putting in all the searchable ones. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and now I need to do a quick map out. So update preview, we should be back to 37 lands, right? Good. Okay. Let's take a look here. You... I he was four colors. No, he's only three. He's Naya. Because you take him and AC and you cram them together to make Omnath decks. Because mm. um, there's stuff that Obun doesn't have. Like AC has... Ah! Ow, that hurt. AC has moaning, yes. Ow. I love you. Can you not? I moved my finger the wrong way and it hurt. All right, let's see here. What? Uh, oh God, we have nothing that costs two in the. Okay, first of all, sir. First of all, I'm sorry. Go back to Abdan Falconer. No. Yeah, I didn't reread Obun and see that um the land won't have flying. No. So yeah, no, Abzan leaves. Ab Abzan Falconer has to fucking go. Goodbye, Abzan that's Falconer. Just, that's just an objectively bad card. It's actually good in Humans Tribal. Um, it is an objectively bad card. Uh, go back to Living Twister. Hold on, Tusk Guard Captain is the, uh, it's the trample version of Abzan Falconer. Falconer. Well, no, 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 that's fine. Tusk Guard Captain's fine. They're the same card, except one says Flying and one says Trample. Yes, but you want your commander to have Trample. We could just put Brawn in the deck. How much is Brawn? Like a couple bucks, maybe, at best. Yeah. Um, okay, so Living Twister. No, get rid of it. You don't think so? Get rid of it. Discard a land deals two damage. You never want to discard a land. Return a tapped land you control to your owner's hand. It yeah, it gets you the ability to replay a land, but there are cards that are better it than it. It costs two red pips and a green. There are things that do that better. Okay. Like fuck, just the bounce lands in and of themselves are. We'll good do enough. we'll do that. Yeah. Like that's just a creature spot that doesn't need to be taken. Um, yeah. You have Evo Sage? Is Evo Sage yeah. cheap? Okay. Yeah, I need to set up my ramp area. Fertilid's one of our ramps. I don't... Explore. Uh, is Explore in the deck already? No, but... It... Yeah, Explore's okay. Um, because but... it allows you to put a land down. Yeah, I just need to map out what's in here right now. Spring, Bloom... Because the deck should be running about 18 ramp because it's lands matter, if oh, not yeah, more. Oh yeah, absolutely. Wait, minute, minute, hold on. Go down. 
Okay. It's the budget Azusa lost, but seeking. Well, it's Azusa, but for red and green. Yeah, we're also gonna put a druid class in here. Oh yeah, druid class. Fuck. I'm not gonna count Minaden towards our ramp because no. we're not always gonna have the. No, you never count them towards ramp. They're just nice to have. Actually, I think I'm gonna take Admonition Ammunition Angel out. No, uh, no, 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 no. Go back over it. No, no, you keep that in. Okay. You keep that in. The reason being is because when you put that out, and let's say nobody responds to you um, playing uh, your Avenger, mm -hmm. and they try to respond to something else that does a board wipe, uh, or they try to do something, uh, I forget the exact timing of it, but you can play a land before they have a chance to respond to anything else you do. Mm hmm. Uh, because it's considered a special action, and it sits outside of timing for most things. It sits it's in, in its own realm of timing. Gotcha. Um, and Admo, Admo Angel actually helps you save your Avenger and gets it back for you later on, or your commander. Bleach. So, uh, it's just a, an all-in all in good card. Actually, I'm taking this as a renewal out. We're going to swap that with Splendid Reclamation. Instead of getting three lands at once, we're going to get every land we crack to the grave. Oh, make sure you have a Cambridge. It's already in. Oh, yeah. I wasn't about to, to do that. Uh, what? Oops. God damn it. Fuck. Okay, looks like I'll do it all the fuck again. Which cards are cucked? Give me a moment, Anubian. I just accidentally reloaded the page, and, and I have to do it all over again, so... You're going to have to give me a minute. Also, can you... Is that too small? Is is this is this text too small to be able to read? Here, let me make, let me make that a little easier. These are the cards that are being taken away. It's fine. Have everything down. Yep.
Highland Forest. A level. Okay. 37 lands. All right. Now I've hit save just in case we run into problems. I am avoiding those problems. All right. All right. Kadama's Reach. Soul Ring. Arcane Signet. Funny Heart Expedition. How's it going, Alex and Draws? You're not actually together forever. You're leaving. Goodbye, together forever. You can't find Scare Tiller? That's awkward. Could it be replaced by something? I mean, Scare Tiller's leaving. Like, these are all the cards that are leaving. These are the bad cards. It could be replaced by... You could replace Scare Tiller with a left shoe. And it would be just as good. All right, ramp one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The deck is sitting at $29 right now. So, let's fix the ramp real quick. Rampant growth. Wood elves. Solemn Simulacrum. Cultivate. Farseek. Nature's Lore. Sky Shroud Claim. Edge of Autumn. Now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. That is closer to a respectable amount of cards for that. And that added $10. We know Avenger of Zendikar is going in. We know Scoot Swarm is going in. All right. 15. We've spent half the budget so far. 85 cards. That. All right, uh, search for tomorrow. Search for tomorrow goes in. There we go. Search for tomorrow doesn't add too much to our price. All right. Is there a Cultivator Colossus? Cultivator's like $25. 
Cultivator would be a Nubian's entire budget. We can't afford a Cultivator Colossus for this. Molly Momaro Sorcerer goes in because he's cheap. I don't hate you here as respite, but probably not necessarily here. Sarah Paragon, that's too expensive. Roiling, planner rampaging, retreat. Return. These are all cards that are already in the pre con. Multani. Lotus Cobra goes in. That's a basically a guarantee. He's a he's a good boy. We need better draw. Soul's Majesty is probably going to be our, our secondary draw. Yep. Soul's Majesty is what we're going to add in here. I should probably ramp out our draw. Draw. Let's see here. Uh... Millie Raccoon, thank you for the follow, and also thank you very much for reading your points, friend. Oh, well. Oh, well. Let's see. None of our creatures draw us anything. Awkward. There's not a Swords to Plowshare in here, either. Mm. Oh, I don't like this. Return of the Wild Speaker, Souls, Majesty... And what was the other one? The, the other draw? We just added in the uh, Seer Sundial. Oh, man, I hate that. Tremendo. Shark, how's it going? How the hell was your stream? Sheolarts, thank you for the follow. You desperate jack-o'-lanterns. You have a nice smile. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Inspiring Call is kind of... But I'm not going to count that. Oh, uh, we're not going to count any of that. Okay, so... I guess we got Harmonize. Okay, in chat, green draw spells. Green and white and red draw spells. I know that these are, like, the colors that are worst at drawing cards. So, help. Uh, we're helping a uh, somebody in the chat right now fix up their Obun deck. It's a pre-con for Magic the Gathering. Uh, and I'm trying to fix it up in, under a tight budget. Let's see here. I wonder. Hold on. Let's see here. The dollar precon upgrade. That's Command Valley. What draw things do you suggest? Rada, there's that. Farseek's already in there. Falakut, Felidar. Classification. End race for runners. That's for go wide. We need a go wide strategy. We got go wide shit. We don't care about that. 
Mm, you lost me at Magic the Gathering. That's fair. That's fair. Oh, uh, let's see here. Please tell me Commander's Quarters has this deck that I can look at. No. He does not... Heck. Okay, then we go to Scryfall. Draw. White, red, green. At most, these colors... Uh, and legal in commander. That's what we're gonna do. Boom. So you want to get into Pokemon because it's cheap? That's fair. Uh. Oh, Hammerets Archive. Maybe that's expensive though. I don't like that. That's too expensive. God, we just have the worst colors for drawing cards. Ah! Uh. Let's go back to EDH Rec. Do you have anything that draws in here? Ram Nup Excavator needs to go in. I know that. Okay, which means we've used $20 of the budget. There's $10 of the budget left. Agent Green Warden, you're too expensive. Can't use you. Azusa, you're too expensive. Druid class isn't, though. Druid class is nice and cheap. You're willing to go to 40? I'm going to try to keep it at 30, though. Like, I'll try to keep it at 30. Bylath, World Sculptor, you're good for this deck. Oh, I didn't put Steve in here. Steve's got to go in. Duh. Fucking Lands Matter deck not running Steve. I'm an idiot. Uh, Let's see here. Tireless Tracker could be a fun draw engine, right? Tireless Tracker, where are you? Yeah, you make clues. Tireless Tracker will be okay. Hayaba Stein, thank you for the follow. Okay, the next six cards need to be draw cards. Like, no ifs, ands, or buts. We need draw cards. We need cards that will let us draw. I guess that Armorcraft Judge could stay in. I don't... I don't like him, but... So no. We're actually going to keep Armorcraft Judge in. Because we desperately need the draw. Which means our draw has that. Our removal is also severely lacking. Removal wants at least a beast within. Like, it wants... Beast within...
Chaos Warp and a Swords to Plowshares. Like, it at the very least wants that. Which puts us a couple dollars over the budget. But it, it needs that removal. It, it needs it bad. It's two cards that can draw. Two cards that can draw. Uh, let's see. Oracle, not super helpful for us. Super too expensive. Let's see. Not of the Will Cray, no. The deck's not running a Rex Sage yet, right? God, we can't afford to. We need. We just need draw. We just need draw. What kind of draw shit is there in these colors? There's nothing. There's no draw in these... Oh, Generous Gift is a good removal, actually. Generous Gift needs to be added in. Duh. I guess... Okay. Then the last card can be draw. The, the last one will be draw of some kind. Hayabusa Stein, thank you for the follow. Ground Assault, no. Splendid Reclamation. I, I guess it's going to have to be that. Maybe. No. Escape to the wilds. That's going to... Oh, wait. Rishkar's expertise. I'm dumb. I forgot about Rishkar's. I forgot Rishkar's was a good draw card. I'm stupid. I forgot that that's a thing that we have. Deck technically needs Blasphemous Act, but... Mm. Shamanic Revelation? I guess it could use Shamanic Revelation. We've got the token generation. I guess it could use that. Update. All right, what can we remove from this set? Chaos. Mm. I guess Edge of Autumn can go. Tremendo. Holy fuck, Jimmy as well? Well, howdy fucking do. How was your stream? Which means Edge of Autumn leaves here. Never look at tulip and it leaves the inn area. Goodbye, Edge of Autumn. All right, the last thing we put in there was that, so we need to add all these. There we go. Jimmy smiled. Oh. I hear it's scary when that happens. Okay. So this put us just-ish at 
we're a little above 30. We're 37, which is somewhat doable as an upgrade. Let me set up what the removal is real quick. Rejuvenator, Fertilid, Scoot, Spring Loom, Tireless. Cracker, okay. Uh, Admonition. Angel. What is our other... Friend and supporter, thank you for the follow. And Goldfish of Doom, thank you for the follow as well. Generous gift, Harrow, inspiring call. I'm not going to count Naya Charm, it's too modal. Crush Contraband. Struggle. Board wipes are hour of revelation and what is the other one? What do we have in here? Planner outburst. Those ones. Yay. Okay, so. Okay. There we go. Draw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There should be. Yep. Eight is not great, but it's fine. Removal one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two board wipes. Ramp wise, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, four, fifteen, fifteen. 24 ramp, but it's a lands matter deck, so that's expected. What will the struggle slash survive card? Struggle survive is already in the deck. Like struggle and survive is part of the act, like part of the deck already. I thought. What does it do? Deal damage to target creature equal to the number of lands you control. And then Aftermath makes everybody play everybody shuffle their library into their uh or their graveyard into their library. You're really only playing it so you can just snipe one creature off the board. Person plays their commander and you say I don't like that and you kill it. That's that's what it's for. Truth be told, uh, it would rather be a path to exile, but we don't have the the funds given the budget. We already went $7 over budget. And I feel bad going $7 over budget, because that's already a lot. But here is the deck. Let me go ahead and send you real quick. Let me go to the fan art section because I know that's where I'll find your uh, your stuff real quick. Okay. So, there is the link to the upgraded deck. And then... Slot breakdown. And then this is the breakdown of the deck uh, per piece. So you've got the cards that leave, you've got the cards that are coming in, and then you've got the slot breakdown for which things go, like which things are doing what. If it is not part of the slot breakdown, consider it part of the synergy pile, which is your pile of cards that help you win the game. And that's their only job. Like, Minna is a synergy card. Multani is a synergy card. 
Uh, Molly Momaro Sorcerer is a synergy card. Their, their job is to win the game. Whereas everything else that's in there is the stuff that helps either bolster your strategy or help you survive. So like the removal that you need in order to interact with players, or the draw you need to be able to keep up with players. I lied. There's actually... Hold on. I need to fix the thing real quick. I need to edit this impact this thing right here. I lied. These It's not 24 ramp. It's not 24 ramp. It's Elder. Eighteen. Eighteen ramp. There we go. Just fixed it. It's 18 ramp, not 24 ramp. I mixed up the slottings. There you go. It should cost you $35 to get every card that is in the uh, the upgrade area. Freaking out. Thank you very much for the subscription. Ah. Uh, okay. All right. I'm burning up, so before we continue, I'm going to go get a thing of canned air, and I'm going to fix my fan real quick. is better. It is better. Okay. I've got a little more airflow coming to me, and my life is better. <sighs> ah, don't hurt. Don't on. Fucking cookies. Hmm. 
Okay. So. Now we've got the Obun upgrade figured out. I can slot that under shit I have done. Well, little demon is... So I'm good. <laughs> from Greg Lock? No, I've got the stuff I've scheduled first. Jimmy Snow is going down the cat girl pipeline and now he's considered making a VTuber model. Oh dear. So you don't anticipate staying up long enough. That's fair. Uh, it's midnight and you have classes tomorrow. Probably a good idea to get, get some sleep then. Jimmy Spencer, is there somewhere I can post pics of the moon on Discord? I, I, I don't, mm. you'd have to ask Raz, I think there is, but my brain's getting fried. Check out. See you, August stream. So if you have a VTuber model, it would likely be some humanoid in a suit with uh, leather gloves and a TV set for a head. So you mean it would just be Timer Coon? I said, uh, if you had a VT model, you'd probably be an axolotl. <laughs> okay. Is Pokemon on, in your background on a loop? Uh, it's on a loop, but it wasn't on a loop when I, uh, when I recorded it. 
It was it was just a, a, a little baby boy when I recorded it. Okay. All right. Now that I've got all that taken care of. So the Joker and Batman Arkham Asylum kind of gave me the inspiration. Gotcha. Let me get all of my shit ready to go. It should take just a moment. Where the fuck? Where the hell? Scrolling up, scrolling up, scrolling up. There we go. I found it. If there was a canon child for Slime Series, well, neither one of them are childs. So think of them more as pets. Think of them more as pets. What Sonic character should you make in Melting Beads? Uh, Rouge the Bat. Go full boobage. Uh, all righty. All right. Let's get things started and ready. Let's do so. So... I wanted to go ahead and take a minute to talk about one Sean McBreer tree. Uh, probably saying that completely incorrectly, but you know what? It's fine. He's got a bit of a rap sheet we're going to be going over regardless, so I'm sure if I get anything wrong, it'll be corrected on the way. But as always, let's first get into the fan art section. The first one here is from Axolotls with Cream. It's the same day update on the last piece that they had been working on, and it is looking good. I know how the final piece looks like because I have it in trading card form. The next one we have here is from Ruicha, also known as Swibby, the Eggy VTuber. Uh, this is a really, really cute piece of artwork, and for those who don't know, I actually got it animated for a starting soon screen. So if you want to see that, well, maybe check out my streams over on Twitch. The last one we have here is from Nia, set inspired by today slash morning slash night. A uh, telephone drawing game it took me way longer than I'd wanted to take, but I'm pretty happy with the result. We have a Vaporeon trying to work its way into a Washer Rodham. This is terrifying. But hey, guys, did you know that in terms of uh, male-female compatibility, uh, Vaporeon is actually... Said that as Vor... I know, I'm aware. I'm aware it's functionally Vor... <laughs> Anyways, Rosanix, thank you very much for the follow. Is that a hammer on the tail? It was. As always, everyone, thank you very much for your fan art submissions. If you want the fan art to be shown, your fan art to be shown in a future video, the best way to do so is to drop to the fan art section of the Discord. With that said, let's go ahead and get right into everything. This is the image that very first... Oh, wow, I still have my, my deck building stuff up. Let's do that. Boom. This is the first image that I saw that introduced me to Sean. He had a post saying, Ellsworth uh, Kindergarten Open House provides parents a look at the indoctrination that their kids are facing by teacher Rhonda Ulickney. Her class is not a family. It's not about being kind. It's about colors and ABCs. Parents are the family. Pull your kids now. Let's take a look at the image itself here. Rainbow hearts make man angry. Rainbow hearts make man very angry because it makes him think of the gay. And then she has a poster that says, like, this class is a family. This is, this is what makes him mad. 
rainbow colored hearts and a picture saying this class is a family. This is the stuff that makes him upset. This is the stuff that makes his brain go <laughs> bad. He is he is literally mad about colors. Yes, he did say that the that the class is about colors and then he got mad at, you know, colors being shown. Now, I know that you can look at that heart and immediately think, "Oh, it's a gay pride heart." And guess what? Even if it is, who the fuck cares? We have conservative brain rot on full display because rainbows. Hey, Sean, how did you find out you were gay? Rainbows. That said, so that was my first introduction to him. But lo and behold, a user named Mooncat actually managed to get a ton of documented stuff about him together in a single thread that we are going to be going through today. Because when that's my first, like when my, my first actual look at someone, I immediately want to dismiss them and go, okay, well, they're just reactionary online. Who knows? Who cares? They're not super important. Did you know that he got kicked out of a school board meeting for playing a, a recording with with a room full of parents, young children, and teenagers around? Did you know that? Here, here's what the recording said. RSC22 trying to sell us that porn is A-OK -okay in these libraries. Chair Miller, you told me during our call that porn is OK as long as it's within the context of the whole book because then porn would have a different meaning. And I wanted to play that. Playing of a video or a, or a recording is not permitted per our policy. It's not true. Right. So are you okay with hardcore anal books that are on her list? I mean, hardcore anal sex books. So before we continue, I, I need to make sure y'all can hear this. I need to make certain y'all can hear this at full, full volume. It's not true. Right. So are you okay with hardcore anal books that are on her list? I mean, hardcore anal sex books. Are you, are you okay? this, this is vulgarity. It is not part of I'm going to ask you to shut the video off and sit down, please. You're talking about vulgarity, and it's not part of our policy. I'm going to ask you to shut the video off and sit down. I'm not currently doing anything to provide you, your comments, which you say pornography is I've okay. asked you to sit down. If you do not sit down, I'm going to ask you to leave the premises. You also said there's a policy. I've asked you to, to sit down. Seven. I'm going to ask you now to leave the premises. And if you don't, we're, we're going to take a, a, a recess until you leave the premises. Oh. So, when in a parent-teacher meeting with a whole bunch of people, dude decides he's going to play a recording of him saying hardcore anal sex over and over again. Now, you may ask yourself, well, there weren't any, any kids there. There weren't any kids there. Yes, there were. Not where the video was pointing, but they were certainly part of that conversation on the right-hand side. So, not only was he not supposed to be playing a recording out there at all, that's not something that he was supposed to be doing, but he's also perfectly fine just having kids around him that he's trying to not indoctrinate uh, and not have hear anything about porn and sex, anything like that. He's perfectly fine just playing a recording of him saying hardcore anal sex over and over and over and over. Almost as if it's not about protecting the kids. That's always been a fucking smokescreen. Uh, so, what ended up happening with him? Well, on behalf of RSU22, I'm writing to inform you that your client, Sean McBreertree, is temporarily prohibited from entering RSU22 property uh, for purpose of attending any RSU-22 school-related meeting or function in person, or participating in any RSU-22 school-related meeting or function held electronically via audio or video. This temporary prohibit uh, prohibition extends until December 31st of 2022. 
RSU-22 is taking this action due to the blatant and repeated failure to comply with reasonable policies regarding meeting attendance, which were outlined in a letter to him on April 8th of 2022. In the letter, it was reminded to Mc uh, Mr. McBreatry of the behavioral expectations when attending meetings, and advised of the consequences if you failed to follow those actual uh, behavioral expectations. In response, you wrote me on April 22 saying that Breertree would attend the RSU school board meeting on the 27th. On the 27th. Mr. Mayor, uh, Mick Breertree did, in fact, attend that school board meeting and spoke during a public comment period. Shortly uh, after his beginning comments, he played an audio of a phone conversation which contained patently obscene and vulgar language. The board chair exercised his discretion and gaveled Mr. McBreatree out of order and asked him to stop the presentation and take a seat. He refused to do so on multiple occasions, and the chair told him to leave the premises. When he refused to do so, chair called a recess. Mr. McBreatree eventually left the meeting, but while he did, he held the audio recording behind his head and let it play loudly so that it could be heard by those attending the meeting. Due to his latest episode, and due to Mr. McBreatree's uh, repeated and deliberate failure to comply with reasonable school board policies that have been reasonably applied to Mr. McBreatree over the last few months, the school board believes the appropriate and necessary action is to prohibit him from attending any meetings and functions, as stated above, for a limited period of time. The prohibition is not based on any viewpoint expressed by him. Rather, it is based on his use of truly obscene speech and his willful violation of the school board policies over an extended period of time. Please confirm that you have received this letter. So when you act like a piss baby in front of a group of adults, and the group of adults treat you like a piss baby, this is what's gonna happen. So, let's talk about some of the other stuff that is uncovered in this thread when it comes to Mr. McBreertree. Or McBreertree. 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 I just realized that the R is not before the Y, it's before the T. Almost as if I'm bad at reading and bad at my job. So, what happens when uh, he actually doxes the teacher? Saying that they're an American communist uh, live on his YouTube channel. What do, you, what do you do when he does that? What kind of position do you have to have to just start doxing people online and calling them communist? Uh, almost as if there was a point in time where we used to do that a lot. I remember McCarthyism. I had to do a whole paper on McCarthyism. Maybe not do that. So, this isn't the extent of everything he does. No, 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 no. Uh, apparently, he also harasses women outside of their churches. Let's go ahead and... Uh, boop. So, good so, to see you. So, who was that lady before? Very inclusive. Very inclusive church you guys have here. Unless you're Christian, or male, or white, or female, or not gay, or heterosexual, or like dogs, or whatever. So, so you, you go in front of churches and start complaining that they're not being inclusive enough to you. Um, which, as we all know, anybody who's dealt with conservatives online know that this is just the, the tolerant left conversation. So much for the tolerant left. Didn't even tolerate my Nazi speak. I'm not saying he's a Nazi or that he's engaging in Nazi speak, but that's typically what we find when we have that conversation. I thought y'all were all about inclusion. Why aren't you including me? Ah, oh, probably because you're a bigot. Go the fuck home. Said dogs, what is with that? Look, I'm not going to have any conversations about white women and dogs, okay? We, ain't, we aren't doing that today. Now, he likes to label himself a uh, child grooming expert, and he appeared on the Dry Bones co uh, podcast recently that is hosted by David Arthur Kendall. Let's uh, let's let's hear him on that podcast. And and all it just screams constantly pedophilia, pedophilia, pedophilia. And because it does this, I look at. Guess what? They don't have to physically touch your child they are raping their mind every yeah, single time oh, they're they're put oh, on that little yellow school bus to hell yeah it's it's mental child abuse i mean yeah, exactly teaching your kids in school is now equivalent to rape 
it is it is equivalent to rape. And yes, his shirt is literally, I am a proud member of the whatever the fuck he wants to put on their community. So, uh, it's interesting that he's worried about pedophilia and he's worried about uh, children being harmed. And so he appears on a podcast with a dude who, um, well, I don't know how to tell you this. I don't know how specifically to tell you this. Other than to take a couple of these pictures. And point out that David Arthur Kendall is a sex offender. You know, there is something to be said about the... Uh, uh, the Association fallacy. You are not necessarily the equivalent of the company you keep. But sometimes, sometimes all of the information that shows that you are an offender is available online for us to see. Maybe, maybe if you are incredibly worried about protecting children. Maybe don't keep company with people who are sex offenders. Maybe don't do that. Maybe there's a lot of things you could do that are just not that. Last month, uh, McBreertree also hosted him on his own podcast. It appears their relationship has been very established for a while. Of course, you know... Why would somebody who cares so much about uh, making sure that children are safe make certain that those are the people that they have with them at all times? And of course, I love that uh, the the topic of conversation is alphabet soup, LGBTQ, ABC, 123 plus with David Arthur. Great personal insight from David Arthur, who once was a trans woman and how he came back from near death. We dive deep into the transitioning cult that is taking our students' minds and tearing them apart with mental illness. Remember, you can search for the main sources of truth on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Maybe instead, go to ddlgplayground.com and use coupon code Ceres. Maybe that would be a better use of your time. But before we talk about the ways in which you can get plugs to go fuck yourself, it's probably important to know, very important to know, that when we're talking about detransitioners, that's a thing that happens. There are people who detransition. This is not news. There are people who realize after going down the path of transitioning that it's not for them. Now, as for how many people actually end up being detransitioners, well, for every one trans person in the world compared to all of the cis people, there's one detransitioner for every trans person, which means that if there's a very small percentage of trans people, there's an even more microstop uh, microscopic percentage of people who detransition. However, conservatives really like to grab people who detransition and tokenize them and yank them into their fold so that they can use them in their narratives against people who are trans and don't plan to detransition and realize that they the goal ends up being to use people who detransitioned as an example for everyone. Like, look, trans people can't be real because here's a person who detransitioned, ignoring the fact that it doesn't matter. Again, statistically, the handful of people who detransition does not invalidate the people who do transition. We could go even further when it comes to uh, David Arthur specifically, but we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. Said a uh, detransitioner even rare. Yeah, that's that's kind of my my point. That is kind of my point. But, 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 the question becomes, what else can we find on Sean McBreertree's YouTube channel? Because now that we've gotten our little bit of insight on who he is, let's go ahead and take a minute to go to his channel and see what we can find here. 
is a video called K through 12 Advocate for Parents, Students, Taxpayers, and Teachers. RSU2 chooses porn over free speech. Apparently, he went on to Fox News and talked about this. That was from six years ago. I wonder. Then he's got his podcast, of course, that's here. Oh, no, that was from six days ago, not six years ago. I can't. I'm dumb. Let's see what he said over there. Okay, the next item is public comments. This time we'll open up for anyone in the public who wishes to speak on anything uh, that is not on the agenda tonight. Please uh, state your name and your address. Oh boy, here we go. All right, uh, thank you. Sean McBriarty, Hamden. Uh, McBriarty, there we take go. take five or six minutes, but... Uh, as you know, I've been here before to expose and report on the hypersexualization of minors occurring in RSU 22, most specifically within Reedsbrook Middle School. Before we continue, let me make sure that I've got that volume turned up a little bit, because it doesn't seem to be loud enough. So let's go ahead and turn that up. There we go. Happening to 11-year-old children of this district, with you, the board, allowing this to be paid for with our tax dollars. I've read the following quote of a Reedsbrook student before, and I wish to again. Quote, my experience at school this year has been awful for many reasons. I've been made to feel extremely pressured by all the LGBTQ plus things being pushed in my school. Signs around my school telling me I don't have to use my assigned gender when I can make my own up. That, that's literally written by kids. What? Who the fuck care? Pe oh my God. People put signs up all the time in schools. Kids put this stuff up all the time, especially in middle schools. This is normal. What? <laughs> okay. How long are you going to keep on that one? I've been harassed and verbally attacked this year for not putting a label on myself. I'm scared and anxious all the time what's going to happen. Wait, so you, you, you were harassed for not putting a label on yourself? Okay, just say you're cis. Like, hey, you're cis. D there. D there you go. Boom. Hey, are you are you trans? Nope, sis. Okay, cool. Th boom. Nobody's gonna give a shit. And if kids are pressuring you to be LGBTQ, then as much as that sucks, that is just the opposite. That is just the opposite of what was happening 20 years ago. The exact same thing. Where people were pressuring kids to be straight. But next, with a constant push of sexual orientation comments. Oh, look, we have the headline, and it's from the Epic Times. Oh, my favorite. My guy, uh, you do understand that this is like literally Chinese-funded propaganda. You're aware of that, right? I sincerely hope you know. Yeah, it's funded by the Falun Gong. I, just, just letting you know, you know, maybe it would be a very good idea to not use literal propaganda, but okay. I feel like I have depression and lots of anxiety because of what's happening in school. Now, this is an 11 year old student. And yeah. if they're pushing their pronouns, which you're doing right now in this school year, asking each student to put on their piece of paper, their pronouns. Next year, maybe they'll ask the same 11 year old to pick their sexual partner. What? What? <laughs> what? What? Wait, what? Who? <laughs> and you use Chris Rufo as a source? Oh my fucking god! How does that even follow? You know, today you're picking your pronoun. T tomorrow you're picking where the penis goes. No, that's a slippery slope fallacy, my guy. Whoops, the fucketh believes that. And again, this is from Chris Rufo, the dude who we've already done plenty of videos on showing that this guy's entire goal is to shift the Overton window specifically. But if anybody wanted evidence of the far-reaching uh, influence of Rufo, here we are. Solo, uh, Solo Flight 1, thank you for the follow. That's not a very far stretch based on my two years of diligence in researching this. Oh, yeah, sure. I'm sure it's been research and not just reading Epic Times and Christopher Rufo articles. One of these things is research. The other one is being afraid and con uh, confirming your biases. 
And this is from an RSU 22 teacher, quote, I've seen a progression over the years to include gender, sorry, younger and younger children in the concepts of LGBTQ+, gender identity, gender fluidity, and sexual language. Initially, I thought it was to prevent bullying, but as time wore on, it was clear that wasn't the intent at all. The discussions and signs all over the school aimed at young children. What, what's the, pro what's the problem with those signs? What's the issue with those signs? That those are literally signs for just inclusivity. We welcome anybody of any race or skin color or national origin or religion or gender. What, at, who, who, how, that literally is what that is. You're showing evidence that this is benign. Okay. Children really alerted me to the grooming of children. Grooming? <laughs> okay, sure. Why not? Why not? Yes, grooming. The act of bringing yes, grooming. Let's see here. The act of bringing children into a sexual, political, or racial ideology, practice, cult, or lifestyle without the knowledge or consent of his or her parents. For the aim of isolating them from their families so their external party can abuse or manipulate them. My guy, nothing you presented is evidence of grooming. That's what sexual predators do to children, exposing them to sexual content, language, and visuals repeatedly to take advantage of them for their own perversions. You're right. Now show me evidence that that's what the teachers are doing, because you haven't done that. It's not okay. It's sexual abuse. There are other teachers that agree with me, however, we cannot speak up. The climate is such that if you don't agree with the sexual grooming, then you will be the target. Those of us teachers who disagree are afraid of losing our jobs if we speak up. Good, because what you're calling sexual grooming isn't sexual grooming. No, honestly, it's good to have people who are afraid to lose their jobs if they end up doing something that's bigotry. And remember, nobody who actually is a bigot considers themselves a bigot. They will literally go, well, I don't think of myself as a bigot. Sure you don't. Nobody's the villain of their own story, Kyle. Certain ideas and certain people are untouchable. I've had a student confused and concerned thinking that he want, might one day wake up as a girl. The hypersexualization of children is damaging to them, and I'm disgusted with the teachers, the administration, and the school board for so adamantly shutting down any opposing comments and discussion. How is any of that hypersexualization? How is... How, how? How is that hypersexualization? Where where did the hypersexualization happen? Where was that? Can you show me on the doll where the hypersexualization is? Because you didn't show any of it. So that's the real deal, folks. Um, I've got two other reasons to be here tonight. Now, I uh, received a letter on May 17th from Paula Scott, town manager, stating that the intent of this ordinance, which is the regulation of obscene materials harmful to minors. Okay. So your display of materials harmful to minors in any uh, premises open to the general public. It shall be unlawful for any person unknowing to display, and only permit or allow a photograph. Okay, cool. It's on screen here. If you want to read it, you can. Is to regulate which is displayed in retail establishments open to the general public. Now, the schools are open to the general public, at least they used to be. Um, and we'll get that in a minute. But Section 3 of the ordinance, which I actually mentioned last time in May when I was here, states that display of materials used and displayed for educational purposes, educational purposes being the key, such as library schools, shall not constitute a violation of this ordinance. Now, I agree with the ordinance that schools cannot be held in violation. However, as I stated before, my opinion is that individual teachers like Kelsey Stoyanova, who pushed kitty porn. Sean, uh, Kelsey Stoyanova, named 2022 Teacher of the Year by the Maine Department of Education, released a reading list that included a book called Middle School's a Drag, and it concerns an enterprising boy who starts his own junior talent agency and signs a 13-year-old aspiring drag queen as his first client. Okay. And you realize that drag is no different than ballet, right? It's it's just a type of dance. That's all it is. 
Like, Mardi Gras plus ballet equals drag. Cross-dressing is a part of it, but again, that's not inherently sexual. Like, how is that porn? Like, th th how is that kitty porn? That thing that you showed, how is that kitty porn? Okay. Okay, so a primer for teens eager to be allies as well as reassuring. Well, let's see here. This was my ass. I was trying to imagine someone inside of me, and he was big. Okay, let's let's read let's read this here real quick. Includes content on page two hundred one. You were fully erect at this point. You can't tell anyone. Okay, I promise you. Grabbed my hand and made me touch it. By now, we're both touching each other. Tried my best not to enjoy it because you were my cousin. You were crossing a line that a family shouldn't cross. You told me to take off my pants, which I did. You then took off your shorts and followed your boxers. You then stood in front of me. Okay, so it's describing a very soft scene where somebody is being violated. All right, let me show you part of my reading material back when I was in school. Yeah, so that's not porn, okay? It's explicit, yes. It ain't great. It ain't great. However, there is a pit okay, child. It, it's it's time. It's time to stop. It's time to go. That is a bowl. Why did you jump on that? Did you seen steamier in romance novels? So it wasn't a raisin in the sun that I was thinking of, but there was a book, and I can't remember the book's name for the life of me, but it was part of my reading materials growing up, okay? And the book itself was about a, 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 a Hispanic girl who came to America with her family to seek a better life. And it was very early on, like it was, it was like, what, 50s? 50s or 60s when the book was set. And the book very express, like explicitly gave details of scenes where this person was sexually assaulted, which I would deem as far more graphic than this. I wish I could remember the name of the book, uh, but maybe the, the line, because the line, it, it's, it's, a, it's a trigger line for me now, but there's a line in the book where the assailant uh, literally says, I love you, Spanish girl. And then the uh, the protagonist of the story who was being assaulted at the time, the first thing she said, uh, the first words that she, not words that she says, but the thoughts in her head are that um, he tastes sour. Like he tastes sour and awful. I'm not 100% certain what the book's name was but I remember it being part of my necessary reading in ninth grade. So literally right as I came out of middle school. There are tons of books that talk about abuse, that talk about people getting harmed in various ways. This also happens in movies all the time. It said the Fountainhead also apparently has an entire rape scene in it. Uh, wasn't there rape in the color purple? Like, again... This is a thing that happens. Sexual assault is a thing that happens to people in real life. Doesn't make it porn. Sexual assault is a thing that happens to people in movies. Doesn't make it porn. Sometimes, if you just cut all of the context out of a book, you can label something as porn without it being that. I wish I could remember the actual book it was. I thought it was Raisin in the Sun, but it's not. I do not remember. Maybe the title had something to do with grapes. Somebody in the comment section might be able to help me here. If you went to West Florida High School, um, then this was probably part of your required reading as well. So maybe, maybe somebody can help me out with that in the comments. But again, I am seeing material here that is explicit. It's explicit, yeah. Whether or not it is porn is going to come down entirely to all of the context that is not being shown here. Let's see here. 
I'm also trying to see if there's evidence here that that's actually part of... So, middle school's a drag. Let's see here. Let us see here. How many pages is it? Let's see. Hmm. Explicit means it needs a content warning, not necessarily that there's actually, you know, that it's pornographic. I'm trying to see if there... See, here's my other question. Do we have evidence that this is from that book? ...boy who starts his own junior talent agency and signs a 13-year-old aspiring drag queen as his first client. Or is that from All Boys Aren't Blue? Is that from the book All Boys Aren't Blue? Maybe? Young adult nonfiction memoir manifesto uh, considers a series of essays following John's journey growing up as a queer black man in Plainfield, New Jersey. Okay. Again, this this is just very poorly edited together. With principle. Why do you? What, what is what is this picture supposed to show? What is this picture supposed to prove? Wait, this picture right here. What is this picture supposed to prove? What does it show? Okay. With Principal Susan Thibodeau in Reedsbrook Middle School, through daily prizes and incentives and announcements last school year. Let's see here. Please promote RSU 22 Reads 3. We can get it on Facebook after you roll it out. Uh, Sensor staff, hello. We are starting our RSU 22 Reads 3 challenge this Monday. Homeroom teachers, please display the slide during homeroom. This reading challenge is part of our celebration of Black History Month, so please encourage students to take part. There will be prize drawings for students or staff who write a short review on a book we read. We'd appreciate your help in getting the word out. Okay. Who who cares? Send this slide. Okay, what's the slide? You gonna you gonna show the slide? There. You keep on showing that slide. Can indeed be punished. So you're not going to show the slide? <laughs> okay, fine, whatever. For their actions. It's not only a local ordinance, but a state and federal law as well. Okay. So I ask you, Mayor McPike, will you vote this evening to direct Town Police Chief Christian Bailey to investigate this matter fully, or will you be telling the constituents that you and this board like Heath Miller, RSU 22 school board chair, are okay with the pornography flowing to minors in RSU 22 as long as it's in the context of a book. Heath, are you, are you okay with your daughters reading that? Well, I can tell you that that I'm not okay with some of the things that you've sent me reading in that, in that contents, but if you were re to read it in the contents of the whole book, it would have a different meaning. Yeah, the context isn't just that it's in a book. The context... Okay, so... Has anybody here read A Child Called It? Has anybody here read that series? And it is a, it is a series, if you've not read all of it. So... Said nope. Okay, so first of all, any of you who haven't read that book need to fucking read it. It is a... It is a very hard book to read, but it is a very important book. The book is about child abuse. 
Now, one could, without the context of what's actually in the book, one could call that book torture porn. One could easily call that book torture porn, and given that it involves a child being the one being tortured, you can see how far we can go from there. Now, within the context of the story of the book, it's just simply the suffering the protagonist is dealing with. It's also an autobiography, so it's the suffering that the writer is dealing with. It seems like they quoted all boys aren't blue. Okay, cool. So, that is a book that, again, if you haven't read it, I assure you, you need to. But it is a book that if you were to take bits and pieces of it out of context, you would have scenes like a child in a bathroom having to clean with a combination of ammonia and bleach and then being forced to swallow the concoction um, in small amounts so as not to kill him, but certainly to in uh, induce chemical burns. Shit like that is very hard to read. And shit like that is very explicit, and it could be part of a torture porn. It could easily be part of a Saw series or a snuff book, but it's not. It's, a, it's about child abuse. Within the context of the book, that story has changed from what you can pull out of it on its own. Uh, Shade's Children is another book like this. There's plenty of points in Shade's Children where there are kids talking about their periods. Where there are are children talking about their menstrual cycles. I discovered what a period was by reading that book. Specifically, there was a line uh, where a, a child was talking about a tracker she had to cut out of her wrist and said that it was unfair that she had to cut a tracker out of her wrist because as a girl, she already bleeds enough as it is. Thank you. And I had to then ask what that meant. And then I was told about periods. But the fact of the matter is, there are ser uh, there are scenes in that book that involve people having sex, people who are minors. There's a moment in that book where it describes the genitalia of a minor who had been pumped up with steroids his entire life and therefore had something that was useless and floppy there. Is that book porn? No, it's not. If you read the goddamn book... It's not porn. It's just described as a brute fact. But if I told this wackadoodle that there was a book available at their kid's library that talked about girls menstruating, uh, them going on about their periods, and uh, talking about a boy's genitalia after it had been chemically altered. If I gave that information and then took the lines from the book without any context, I could have this guy freaking the fuck out about Shade's children. Easily. It would not be difficult. Because it turns out, books are big. There's a lot of context in them. And sometimes they describe explicit things. Guess what? That's not a bad thing. It's not. The context of the book will matter a fuck ton, Sean. Or... Put this topic on the agenda. Oh yeah, we could do the same thing with the Bible. We, do we want to talk about? Do we want to talk about Ezekiel? Do we want to talk about horse cocks and donkey emissions? Do we want to do that? Do we want to? Do we want to talk about women lusting over men's genitalia, hoping that they look like the animals they wish they'd fucked? Like, do we want to do that? Because I mean, we can do that with Ezekiel. That's a thing we can do. Jesus Christ, these people would freak out if I showed them random ass Bible quotes. Next meeting so that the actual, you know, other parents, residents, taxpayers and teachers could maybe speak to this. So, Mr. Monk McPike, I know in public comment, normally you don't answer, but. So for the record, I was recently awarded forty thousand dollars from RC 22 because of their egregious error in trying to willfully withhold my First Amendment rights. Really? Maine School Board ordered to pay a parent 40000 for violating First Amendment rights. He was banned from attending school functions after accusing the school district of hyper, uh, hypersexualization. Wait, this man was awarded money for that shit? Whoops the fucketh? Who? What? On talking about this hypersexualization of minors. Now you can find the video as to why on my YouTube page. 
but they tried to throw me off campus, my alma mater as a taxpayer resident here in Hamden. They spent months of taxpayer payroll and time focusing on me. Instead of the investigation to the hypersexualization, their own policies, of which they're not following, that I and many other students, parents, taxpayers, and teachers have provided testimony to. Chasing lawyers around instead of improving their woeful student assessments, where 62% of Hanman Academy students are below or well below the state guidelines in math. Okay. Two thirds. That's a category error, or that's a, that's what aboutism. Your students not doing well, and then their your school having a reading program with certain books on it are not. One of these things does not matter in the context of the other. So the students coming out of that high school don't know math. And I'm not sure if you're aware, only 36% of Maine's fourth graders, re graders read at proficiency. Okay. So only one in three kids. In so maybe don't attack a fucking reading program, you numbnuts. In this district can read at a fourth grade level. That's a crisis, Mayor McPike. I'd estimate Heath Miller and RSU 22 easily spent $35,000 on top of the $10,000 deductible that the town's insurance company will pay towards the $40,000. Now, I hope they don't raise your insurance rates or drop you next year because we very easily might be doing this again with RSU 22. Now, uh, they can contain the amount of time on the microphone, but not the content. The First Amendment protects that from the government. The court concluded they were trying to restrict him only because of what he was saying. And that you cannot do. Anyone if you if you do this at a local court, then yeah, Maine's a red state. That makes sense. They're gonna call for that. Even so, like what he was saying was playing a clip of hardcore anal sex repeatedly in front of a bunch of people. Anyone uh, can indeed provide their concerns to any member of RSU 22, including 8th grade teacher of the year Kelsey Stoyanova, Principal Susan Thibodeau, and school board chair Heath Miller, all of whom are pushing child pornography on minors across the street is in that, that school. Is it's that child porn, though? And finally, I want you to know, it wasn't because of me that this taxpayer money was spent irrationally. It was because of the lack of leadership of Heath Miller and the RSU 22 school board. No, it literally was you. You were the one who caused the problem. You are the reason that the money was spent. This is like the villain coming at you and aiming a gun at your head and going, you know, it's not my fault that your brains are about to be blown out. This is a culmination of every wrong decision you made in your life leading you here. And then, you know, they pull the trigger and you're like, I mean, dude, y you could have not pulled the trigger. Like, that was a you thing. You were the one who did that. It's due to the inability for him to critically think, follow his own policies, follow the law and the Constitution, something all of you have done, provided an oath under God to uphold. So Mayor McPike and the members of this council, will you uphold your oath and protect the children of Hamden from kiddie porn in these schools? That Again, what you showed wasn't kiddie porn. That's how serious this is. I will not be seeing one dime of this taxpayer money. It'll all go into the First Amendment fighting for other parents in this state and fighting schools just like this one across the road. As I said from the start, I would not take any taxpayer dollars in this effort. If we can make some changes for November 8th, maybe, just maybe, we can finally see educational freedom here in Hamden. Until then, I'd advocate for all parents in RSU 22 to pull your children out of this woke wasteland immediately or risk losing your children forever. That's how serious it is. It's biblically bad. Now to keep- Why the fuck does the Bible matter here? You're not supposed to be learning the Bible in school. Your religion is for you and your personal home. Up to speed with what's going on. You need to follow <laughs> what's happening, the information that I'm providing, the FOA requests and these things. Um, it's not very far, hard to do. There are dozens of videos online on my YouTube channel. Dude plugs his YouTube channel at this event. Okay. And you can follow the main Source of Truth podcast. You can also follow it on Facebook. Okay, now we're just, he's just plugging now. Something, something, you know what? I, I need energy to deal with this. Maybe I, I, maybe I need to go to drinkwraith.com. Maybe I need to use my own coupon code, get 20% off of anything there by, by typing in Necoceris. That's probably a thing I need to do. This dude's just plugging himself in the middle of a meeting now. I mean, I guess it's free advertising. Let's see how well it did for him. Let's see how well it did for him. Oh, he's still at 332 subscribers. Didn't do too well for him. Hmm, awkward that.
Awkward, that one. So that's Sean McBriar Tree. McBriar Tree. Mc... That. <laughs> I still... I heard him pronounce his own name, and I still can't pronounce it. That's how bad I am at this. That's how horrible I am at this job. But... I find this arc fascinating. You have a person who associates with literal actual sex offenders and then gets pissed about people being groomed when we're talking about books with no context listed for the shit around the books. Now, I'm wholly un I, I wholly understand that I could be wrong. There is a part of me that could be incorrect about the contents of those books. But as somebody who's read some young adult novels in my time and found that those young adult novels had some steamy shit in them that I still would not consider porn, you know, I'm I'm just going to say, I'm sorry, Sean. I, I can't find myself caring about your screeching. I can't. Nor the screeching of my cat. Because she's just loud. But that said, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I found this to be... <laughs> reading level is dumb. I found this to be very, very sad. Very, very sad to go through. But let me know what you guys think. And hopefully none of you have had the displeasure of dealing with him. As always, everyone, insert any video tagline here. Let me go ahead and get a drink real quick. On one, two, three. Okay, that all goes there. This one is... Can we send that info to him publicly? Like, show him that friend of his as a perm? Uh, as a perm, see if he cuts ties. I mean, you can. Go ahead. Like, that's a thing you can do. I'm not going to stop you. But I will say that the pain train isn't stopping anytime soon because we are going to go immediately inside into Abby Shapiro. So the alt far right, blah, 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 blah. The real person, uh, the real reason why they use it, uh, why the USA is not even top 10 countries the overall uh, better standards of living. So why do you hate yourself? Well, you see, my my father never loved me very much. No, I have, I have no idea. I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know what's wrong with me. I think something something to do with y'all making coins. But anyway, I guess I'm just going to be showing the breadth of my self-hatred by going into a conversation about Abby Shapiro. But first, this thing, this, this thing... Made by fun with irrelevant. And and I I I just I just wanna die. I I look at this thing and my brain stops wanting to to be. I guess I should probably do this a little more healthily. I should I should frame it as when you do X, I feel X. So when you make coins, I feel dead. <laughs> you a masochist, yes. Well the next one we have here is from I Cannot pronounce that as that is written in Japanese, it looks like. Uh, it said, I pretty much joined the server to post fan art. Uh, I'm not very good at drawing, but I use Hero Forge a lot for D&D. I took the artistic liberty of adding a heart frame and a penguin. There's a, there is a penguin there. He is, a, he is a lad, and he will survive the third impact. The last one we have here is from Axolotls with Creams, and it's done. One card down, one to go. And this is, of course, 
the altar of Adrix and Nev that Axolotls and Cream has worked on. And I do actually have a physical copy of this uh, for, for fun. As always, everyone, thank you all for your fan art submissions. If you want your fan art to be shown in a future video, the best way to do so is to drop it into the fan art section of the Discord. With that said, if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so, and maybe also click the bell notification icon and check out the Patreon. With that said, the very first thing I want to get into, Abby recently did a video uh, entitled, Do I Think Birth Control is Immortal, uh, Immoral and Other Spicy Questions from You? I want to look at this video first before I look at the other video. Uh, this one specifically, I'm only going to play the part where she talks about birth control because it's the only part of it that I really care about. So let's go ahead and take a play. Doop. Do you think birth control is moral? Okay, so here's the story with that, Okay. morality-wise. Because physical-wise, I just don't think it's good for your body. I've tried it. It did not work for me. I put out a video. So let's 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 stop that one right there. So when we're talking about birth control, we are talking about a variety of things. There's multiple different types of birth control that can be used on a an, an AFAB body. Not just the pill, there's also IUDs and other methods that can be utilized. There's also, you know, once a month injections. There's plenty of different ways to do this, and each of them will affect your body differently. Even in pill form, there's multiple different types of birth control that can be used. Uh, the biggest type of birth control is when Nakibri uses 50,001 channel points uh, to get their virginity back by saying uh, birth control is moral, but what I just did isn't. It's true. It's true. You've just gained a virginity. Thanks, Nakibri, for redeeming your points for... Ooh. Ooh. Now... No. The, the, the best birth control is abstinence, and people who throw that war word at me uh, will never have sex. Um, Avalon of Babylon, thank you for redeeming your points for an... Arra, arra, you fucking D-Gen. And Sarah Chikorita, thank you for redeeming your points for an... Oh, well. Oh, well. Naki, Bree, why does your mom let you have two V-cards? But... Let's talk about some of the other things that can happen with birth control, because it's not just that there's multiple different types that will affect your bodies in different ways. There's also the fact that for some people, they have very irregular flows during menstruation, and that can actually be very dangerous in certain situations. And some types of birth control can actually help a ton with that. It can also help a shit ton with the pain that can come with menstru uh, menstruating. Birth control is different for everyone because as it is a bundle of hormones, it's going to respond in your body based on how your body responds to hormones. Simply saying it's not healthy. I know what it does to your body. This is what it did to me. Uh, this is what we call anecdotal evidence. Anecdotes are not data. We have data on how effective birth control is and, and what it does. But let's hear the rest of it video a long time ago saying like it doesn't it doesn't work for me if it works for you that's fine but it doesn't work for me okay that was before i learned that that being on the pill can cause early abortions can it that sounds no but let's let's hear it's like a fail safe built into the pill is that if a an egg does get fertilized it prevents it from attaching on the uterine wall. That's not an abortion. That that that's not an abort that's not an abortion, Abby. That's that's literally just making it to where the the egg just nothing happens. That happens in your body all the time normally. That that's not an abortion, Abby. So I didn't know that for a long time. I just thought that you still don't know it now. You believe that now, and you believe that's abortion, Abby. The birth control pill was fine. It wasn't plan B. It wasn't like the um, copper IUD, which does the same thing. It just prevents an egg from implanting onto the wall, a fertilized egg. But the pill, in very fine writing, <laughs> if you understand how it works, can cause the abortion of a fertilized egg. So I don't think that birth control is moral. Yeah, because you think it causes abortion. That's not what 
fucking birth control does. I would not call something that hasn't even developed its first cell. I wouldn't call that an abortion, Abby. I wouldn't call that an abortion. That thing is not... Th that thing is human in the same way that skin cells I've scraped off the end of my fingertips are human. And that's just not really useful to me. That's not. I'm not even willing to grant that thing personhood. And I'm typically will uh, willing to grant a fetus personhood from, from as early as physically possible. I think that... There are a lot of other better, healthier methods that are good for your body and don't introduce hormones into your body. Introducing hormones into your body. This is so vague. This means this is the type of shit that you hear anti-vaxxers say when they're trying to rail against, you know, standard ass medication. Introducing hormones into your body that carries almost no extra information with it. There's people who will get freaked out about that statement, but have no way to really know why they're freaked out about that statement. And if you actually learn how to use them well, they are they can have pretty high efficacy rates, but... But they won't be as high as the birth control, which is literally the job of the birth control to have, have a high efficacy rate. What are those extra methods, Abby? Would you like to tell us some of those? That could be useful. That's just, that's just what I believe. That's okay. my spicy answer for the day. Okay. Hello. So Abby says, don't worry. There are other methods, wink, wink, that have a high efficacy rate, wink, wink. And, and don't worry. I, I have them. I know them. They are, they are things I know. Fuck me if I'll tell you though. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Abigail Shapiro, a, a brain is not what Santa gave you for Christmas. All right. So we're going to speed up this next one so that she sounds a little more like her brother, uh, because I, that's somebody's fetish, I'm sure. Secondly, this video that I'm going to play next is called Obvious Truths I'm Tired of Saying. Can we stop acting like these are controversial? So let's take a listen. Hello, Classic Crew, and welcome to today's video, where we're going to be talking about obvious truths I'm tired of saying. If you are new to my channel, here we talk about classic living and traditional values, and I would love if you would consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. No, do that to my channel instead. I mean, you're watching over here anyway. And if you haven't already subscribed to my Substack newsletter, where you'll get access to it. Nope, you're plugging. Go to ddlgplayground.com, use coupon codes, uh, Cyrus, 10% off, go fuck yourself, dildo, butthole. You can also get a onesie over there, I guess, if, if you want that. Like, that's probably comfy. I mean, it's getting it's getting cold. Coupon code, Cyrus, 10% off, do that. You feel like a sex would be good. <laughs> Vasectomies can be irreversible, yes, but let's, 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 come on, Abby, stop playing. My discussion thread is really cute. I'm tired of defending, but I'm tired okay. of saying. Y'all, these are obvious. We should all know them by now. And I'm so annoyed that it's still controversial when I say them. Yeah, I'm so tired of saying that, you know, women should have rights to their own bodies. I feel like that should not be controversial. People having rights to their own bodies, that feels like that should be a baseline, a thing that everybody knows and, you know, doesn't have to think about too terribly much. Abby? So... Let's get into today's video. Let's do this. Number one, stop having sex with random people. And by random people, I know this is really not popular, but I'm talking about anyone who you're not married to. That, that's not random people. I'm not married to Raz. We've been together six years. Would that, is, is that a random people? I mean, according to Abby, that's a random people. That is literally a random people. I, I should, I shouldn't have sex with, with Raz. Or any other partner that I end up dating. Just, you know, it's random people. According to Abby. That that's that's completely useless. I I will never understand the sex before marriage crowd. And and by that I mean this. If you as an individual find the idea of your virginity being taken away on your marriage day, then I wholeheartedly, you know, you, you could do that. Be you. Let your partner know that that's, you know, that's your plan. And I hope that doesn't lead to them, you know, marrying you specifically so that they can get in bed with you and then realizing several years later they didn't want to be with you in that capacity and that they were just really, really thirsty for some bootang. Um, I sincerely hope that never happens for anybody ever. Ever. 
But in the event that that's not what happens, if you find that idea romantic, by all means, save yourself. I don't think there's an issue with that. However, the minute you tell other people that they need to conform by that same standard, nope. No. The minute you tell people that they do not, uh, they have to conform to your standard when it comes to sex. Thank you for the posture check, Nitros. Is it, it no, that's stupid. That's like me going over to a couple who is perfectly happy with vanilla sex and me saying, hey, you know, y'all aren't having sex right unless you're using whips and chains. And, you know, uh, I, here, here's a magic wand. You should be using that as well. Uh, make sure not to get too close to the uh, to the nipple. Keep it near the areola. Uh, definitely use these things. You'll love them, uh, but you're not having sex properly if you don't. That would be considered stupid and bullshit, and they would give me funny looks. But magically, when we do the opposite, when we try to tell people and we invade in their sex life in an identical way by saying that you're doing sex wrong if you have sex with somebody who you're not married to, I don't see that as useful. I don't see that as helpful to anybody, and I see literally zero evidence that this is beneficial. At the end of the day, marriage is only as significant as the benefits that come with it. Living with your spouse for multiple years is functionally identical to being married to them. Being with a partner for six years and having sex with them is not having sex with a random person. Thank you very much for the hydrate stuff. Yes, your boyfriend is a random person because you've not committed yourself to sharing your life with that person. So, so yeah, she, she literally believes that people who have been together for years living in the same house for years is fucking random people this is completely useless advice so yes your boyfriend is random anyone who's not your spouse is random stop doing it it's not good for you it's not good for you mentally it's not good for you emotionally it's not good for you physically how how is it not good for you physically what what drains are there physically emotionally how what is the difference what is, the, what is that legal slip of paper change? What is the difference at all? Like, how is it different to you mentally? How is it different to you physically? How is it different to you emotionally? You have to explain these things, Abby. If these are supposed to be obvious things that everybody can get behind and they're not supposed to be controversial, then it should be easy enough for you to explain them. There's really nothing good about having sex before you're married. The great thing about oh. sex when you're married is that it brings you and your husband closer together. It gives you the opportunity to create a new life. It's a great thing when you're married. But when okay, and you know what else it is when you're not married? It's also that, and I mean, if you use birth... You, so you don't have to have sex to have kids, Abby. Sex has more purposes than that. And uh, if you don't believe that sex has more purposes, sometimes even better purposes, then having kids, then let me know in the comment section below so I can laugh at you for being wrong and stupid and dumb. When you're not married, it's done. Stop doing that. Just stop. You no. have to stop. Number two, get married. Yeah, getting married is actually better than any other option. If you can get married, get married. Why? Why should I get the government involved in my relationship? Abby, come, come on. Why? Why is that a thing that I would want to do? Now, for those people who have been looking and are having a hard time finding the right person, we're not really talking about that scenario, right? Because they're trying their best to find the right person. But for everyone else who thinks that marriage is just an option, that marriage is okay, or that marriage is actually a worse choice than remaining single, that's stupid. Stop that. It's obvious that marriage is the best option. Okay, then explain how. Please do it. D ex explain to me how it's, how it's the best. Go ahead, Abby. This should be very easy for you. It's that obvious, right? You have support. You have a lifelong love. You have lifelong commitment. You can build a family with someone who has promised to stay with you and support that family. Yeah, and you don't need a marriage slip to do that. I have been in relationships that have gone on for several years without a marriage slip. And I've seen relationships that have gone on for several months with a marriage slip and then been terminated. You can enjoy the company of someone for the rest of your life. And honestly, getting married makes the world a better place. How? Explain, Abby, how do, okay, Joe Schmo down at the coffee shop sees his, his new flame Loretta and they want to fuck. 
So they decide they're going to get married on Tuesday so that they can fuck. As per your advice, they make the promise to stay together because the promise is all that mattered, right? They're together. They now are married for no other reason than they were goddamn horny and the world is better. How? How? But what what happens here? What was the what was the functional mechanism that made the world a better place, Abby? You're you're gonna have to connect the dots here. Obviously. Number three, have babies. Yes, having babies is actually a good thing. It is the best option. If you can have babies. How? So, okay. For the human race as a whole. Having babies is a good thing because it allows us to have more humans, which is necessary for things like, oh, I don't know, making sure that you've got a retirement fund for everyone. I'm, I'm saying from a purely statistical standpoint, you need there to be people to replace you in the workforce as you get older. Okay, cool. That is not the same thing as saying that everybody individually should be having babies. There are people who should not be parents. There are people out there right now who should not have kids. Have babies. It's awesome. Number one, it's fun. But number two, it's Is it is it really? Is it really fun? I, I've I've talked to some parents who would say very the opposite. Actually a fundamental good to take care of the next generation of people, to grow the next generation of people, and to raise them with good and strong moral values. That's it. I don't know why this is complicated. Yes, having babies is what you should be doing. Traveling the world, eh, having a beautiful I need to get okay. Is she gonna stop? Is Growlithe gonna quit? No. Full amazing career? Okay. Did you have babies? No? Oh, okay, what are you doing? <laughs> so wait, if somebody would rather spend their life dedicated to trying to cure cancer or getting people off of this planet onto another one, or, I don't know, learning better ways to fight the COVID crisis, you're just going to go, uh, yeah, but are, you, are you making babies? Are you making babies? No, no baby? No. No. No career, only baby. Only baby. What? Why? How? How? How is that the position? How is that the position? I. I don't understand why it's so important. And she hasn't explained why it's so important. That's the other part. That's the part that astounds me. Not only is she trying to convince us that it is that important, but there's no explaining happening. There's nothing telling us why. <laughs> yes. Yes, I believe these things. Yes. Yes, I'm being serious. And yes, this is obvious, and it should be obvious. My god, she looks like she's in the middle of a psychological breakdown. Snuggle Fuzz, thank you for redeeming your points for an owl. Owl. Okay, last but not least, men are different than women. Yeah, who could have guessed? Oh. My. God. Men and women are different. Men okay. And who care? Every, everybody is different. Who cares? Men and women are very different in many fundamental ways. And that means that men cannot become women and women cannot become men. Abby, do you know that one of the main things that actually makes men and women different is uh, how our bodies respond to hormones and how they produce them? Did you know that chemically we can alter that? Did you know that the most important part in what makes a person a man or a woman in terms of biology is in fact those hormones? And when we change those hormones up, some really awkward and magical things happen. You'd be very surprised. I could show you a picture of a trans man who you would not be able to clock as trans. And I could show you a picture of a trans woman who you would not be able to clock as trans. And I could make sure that neither of them have had surgeries. It's just the hormones for a lot of people. If we were to dial this completely down to biology, which we can't, but if we were to dial this completely down to biology, she's still fucking wrong. However, given that gender is a social construct and I, you can identity, uh, identify however the fuck you please, she's already wrong on that account. But even if we were to step into her realm of biological essentialism, doesn't matter. 
yep, there are cis women who just look like dudes. Like, because their body responds to testosterone better and produces more testosterone than estrogen. Like, that's just a, that's a thing that happens naturally, Abby. If this is so obvious and non-controversial, then why does literally the science of biology disagree with you? Not only in our biology, not only in our chromosomes, but also what we are, what we do, who we are, what we want. These are all things that are different. Between yeah, you just moved from biology to gender. You moved from sex to gender in that conversation. Guess what? As someone who has hung around a decent chunk of trans people, trans men and trans women, I can tell you that the stereotypes... If I were to just sit there, the stereotypes that I associate more with men, guess what? Those stereotypes tended to be shared more with the trans men than the trans women. You know why? Because it turns out the gender roles that people try to conform to, the ideas, the ways in which we, uh, the ways in which we like things, the ways in which we aspire to be, those myopic things... They get picked up by everyone. And when somebody goes, well, I feel more like a girl than like a boy, guess what? They start aspiring more to those myopic things. Not all the time. You always find people who slip through the cracks there. You'll always find people in the middle. You'll always find people who are non-binary and none of this applies to. But by and large, all of those things we want, you will find that shit in trans people too. Sit down and have conversations with trans people. And you will find that you, A, can't clock them as well as you thought you could, and B, you'll discover that trans women aren't that different from you, especially if they've been out of the closet and on whatever regimen they're going to be on for a decent amount of time, whether that be social, whether that be medical, doesn't matter. You're, you're going to find more similarities than you find differences, unless the only thing you're looking for is those differences. Between men and women. And yes, there can be crossover. Yes, some women are tomboys. Yes, some men are more feminine. But we're all still men and women. And they're different. Okay. This okay, so you admitted that there is that middle ground there. And then you just blatantly ignored it. Like, I, I know there's a middle ground, but, but fuck it. Doesn't matter. Okay, Abby. Okay. Uh, also, when we're talking about gender, we're not just talking about tomboys. I, I hope everybody knows that. We're talking about people, because like a tomboy, generally speaking, is a, a girl who identifies as a girl and happens to have a lot of the traits associated with men, either in physicality or in demeanor. Somebody who is trans and a trans man might have those or might not. However, they will end up leaning more towards the gender roles of a dude, or they'll be leaning more towards the physicality because that's the way they want surgeries to go, or that's the way that they want uh, HRT to change their body or anything. And again, the things I'm describing here do not necessarily apply to everybody. Not. Yeah, that was a terrible feeling. I just had to fly. Uh, just, just try to find my mouth. That was gross. I haven't had that happen for years. That hasn't happened since a long time ago in Florida. That's bringing up some really unpleasant memories. I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. Said so there are plenty of trans women who would be classified as tomboyish. Yeah. Like, it, it doesn't... Like, none of this... None of this means anything. This is Abby just going, I'm tired of saying these obvious things. Why is nobody agreeing with me? I don't know, Abby. Why does nobody agree with flat earthers? Because it turns out that the things you're saying either are actually controversial or are be wrong. Awkward. I know. This is obvious. I'm done. That's it. So those are the four things I want to talk about today. We're just keeping it short and sweet. You didn't talk about them, though. You just said them and walked away. Never. You, you, offered, you offered nothing. There was no information. There was nothing gained. There was just you stating a handful of things and then us dunking on you because that's infinitely more fun than the content you actually make. Cookie Booker, thank you for the follow. I hate to sound so scathing, but like, come on. I, Ab Abby Shapiro does me an upset. Chibas. I love looking through the comments here. Having children is not, isn't a moral obligation in life. It's not everybody's path. This is controversial, not because it's about having babies, but because you have the arrogance and audacity to be telling people what's best for them. Opinions do not equal truths. I feel sad for people raised with these closed-minded ideals. 
Saying your opinion and exclaiming it's obvious after everyone doesn't make it true. So she probably uh, likes to make straw man arguments, just a hunch. I mean, that's the majority of her channel. She learned it from her brother. I find it interesting how people like you ask act as if marriage is a sacred and unbreakable commitment when nearly half of all marriages end in divorce. Jesus Christ. It's insane to me that there are people that will actually take what Abby Shapiro says, not only seriously, but to heart. I, I, I just can't fathom it. I cannot. That said, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. This is another Abby Shapiro video as typical, and I just do not want, do not want... I am so glad I'm Demi, because all of those pictures that people throw up on Twitter, like, oh my god, look, Abby Shapiro's boobs, they're so great. I yeah. And her personality is that of a rusted spork. Who cares? As always, everyone, insert end of video tagline here. I said, ew, what? You've not seen that? Dude... Abby Shapiro's boobs is a know your meme thing. It's it's kind of insane. Does not like, does not want. Tits are great, but tits on a really uh, nice person are even better. What does Ben think about Abby's feet? Good question. Good question. All right, I need to run to the restroom real quick, and then I'll be right back. Before I do, though, uh, Campus of Blind says, uh, or the, the Ein says, what would happen when a communist sleeps with a conservative? Uh, it depends. But generally speaking, an even distribution of cum. Okay. I'm back. So, the, yeah, the red tsunami, also known as when a conservative jerks off. It, it It's little Peters. It's tiny ones. <clears throat> okay. All right, I am going to be taking a look at a channel that I have not seen before. It is called Faith with Erica. The title of the video is Christian Reacts to Little Demon Show. Demon Possession 
Normalized. This is a very interesting title for a video, and I haven't seen it yet, but I I'm, I'm, I'm curious where we're going to go. But before we get into the episode itself, let's go into the fan art section. This one is from Hidden Marty. said, I got into a closed beta for full Dali, so I wanted to paint Cirrus. I wanted the AI to paint Cirrus. The AI really wanted Cirrus to hold an axe instead of the hammer, so I went with it. I don't know if this is fully AI generated or if this was AI generated and then painted. I do not know which one. It actually might have been uh, painted afterwards. Either way, it looks neat. I like it. The next one we have here is from Suzu Sawara. It said, some art to cheer you two up with cuteness and slimes. Aw, it's a slime raz and a slime Cirrus. I like is adorable. The next one we have here is from Rosie Goggles. Said the description is in the link. I'm sorry for the book. For those who don't know, we're not going to read the entirety of the description here because we actually did an entire video on this particular piece of fan art. So if you have not seen the Your Fan Art is Worth It video, then please take a look here. Take a look at that video. It's, it's, it's a very heartfelt one. As always, thank you all for your fan art submissions. If you want your fan art to be shown in a future video, the best way to do so is to drop into the fan art section of the Discord. With that said, let's go ahead and get into the video itself. And just so you guys know, I am going to play it at 1.5 speed, unless that becomes intolerable. So let's go ahead and... What's up, guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be pointing out symbolism on this show. You guys okay. are going to see how the devil is slowly putting his things on mainstream media. And you know what? I'm not even going to say slowly because it's been happening progressively over the years. Yeah, the satanic panic was a long time ago. You're a bit late to the party, but let's continue. And we know that this happens through celebrities, through people who are in the industry, but it's also happening in shows even more. I've noticed that within the last two years, things have been being pushed in the media and in shows, especially with gender and all of these different ideologies. Now <laughs> with gender. Okay, cool. So we have somebody who might be anti-trans. Oh, the normalization of demon possession is being portrayed onto a new show. Not only that, but a couple of weeks ago, I also created a video that I had to delete because it became very toxic, but enough people saw it and enough people got the warning. I did create that video about this game called Cult of Lamb, very demonic game that- You know, when the entire point of a video game is to have the aesthetic of something evil, uh, specifically draped over something normally considered innocent, and that's entirely the point. It's done entirely tongue-in-cheek, which is what happens with Cult of the Lamb. You know, I find it very strange that Christians freak out about this shit and take it so seriously. When I was growing up, they were trying to find ways to twist themselves in knots about Pokemon, and now they've got stuff that's a little more blatant. And you want to know why it's a little more blatant? Because the Satanic Panic happened. Ma'am, I don't know if you understand, but people like you 30 years ago are the reason we have things like Cult of the Lamb now. You are giving free advertising to it. And you are part of the, like, your freakouts about this are part of what makes people gravitate towards that stuff. But okay, let's continue. That is being sold by Nintendo and other, of course, um, outlets and other people that sell games. You can find this game really anywhere. And this is what the devil wants. Nintendo and other outlets. You mean publishers? D you mean consoles? What do you mean by that? This is what his demons want. He wants people to not understand the spiritual realm. He wants people to not understand how demonic things are and how the spiritual realm works. If you come into agreement with the devil and his demons, they have legal grounds over your life. A lot of people are possessed. A lot of people have demons attached to them that they don't even know about. Do you have evidence of that, ma'am? Could you, could you provide some proof that people actually are possessed by demons? How would I identify somebody possessed by a demon? How would I know? Aside from, you know, just pointing to them and screaming that they must be a witch or something through things that they have done and things that they have consented to and things that they have agreed on and so we're just going to take a look at these clips and i'm just going to break down these clips and show you guys what i see here on these clips it's it's things are getting wild but i'm here to basically sound the alarm amongst other people and believers that are sounding the alarm about all of this demonic stuff going on and the way they're trying to normalize it it's not normal demonic things satanic things are not normal my bible tells okay yeah it's it's fiction though you know that abnormal things happen in fiction right like Normal is me going outside and looking at a tree, but fiction can be whatever the author wants it to be. It, it's how that works. You're aware of that, right? I'm going to lower their volume a little bit. Tells me that Satan came to steal, kill, and destroy. So anything that's putting Satan and demons and all of these evil things as though it's entertainment and as though it's good, it's actually evil. They're trying to get into your minds, okay, through entertainment. Uh-huh. 
Everything, everything is trying to possess people. Everything is demonic. Again, I lived through the 90s. I got to see the tail end of the original Satanic Panic. This is just that. Again. Like, none of this is any different than that. I I'm sorry. What is your name? Erica, I want to say. Faith with Erica. Okay, cool. Erica, you understand that this has all happened before, right? Th this is this is old. You are just treading in the footsteps of people who freaked out about every little thing in media once before. And you're doing it again. This is not a new shtick. Getting Christians riled up and afraid is not new. It's a very, very old, common, and quite frankly, boring tactic. But go ahead. Tell us the ways in which we need to be afraid of the piece of fictional media that's been thrown up in front of our faces. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm just going to play the first clip here for you guys. Who's that girl? Their shoes should come with a content warning. What a waste. Ah, new girl. Say hi to the world. First of all, I want to already stop it there because there's a lot of one-eye symbolism. Eye of Horus. That is code for the Egyptians. It came from the Egyptians. We all know. Okay, yeah, and that's not... <laughs> that's not Satanism, ma'am. <laughs> That the Egyptians in the Bible were the most, they were demonic, okay? They were practicing Satanism and amongst other different satanic rituals. And were, no, they weren't. They were practicing polytheism, not Satanism. Polytheism. Oh my God. What is, okay, I, I have a question. Is this just that anything that is not worshiping your specific brand of deity must be Satanism? Because in which case, everything is Satan. Everybody is engaging in a kind of worship against something, uh, against your deity. Yeah, she's calling Egyptian satanic. They were worshiping their gods, not Satan, their gods. You worship your god. That doesn't mean that you're worshiping the bad god in their religion. You're just worshiping a different god. Guess what? You can have different people who have different religions, who believe in different gods. Nobody should care. And satanic things and so i already see the symbolism of the one eye which i see a lot being tossed around you know it's it's very normalized yeah okay black eyes it looks like right there the boy just got demon possessed yeah and Sky over a local junior high has torn open. Mom, get in. i like how she didn't comment on the gore i like how got demon possessed the sky over a local junior high has like she just didn't comment on the lore or on the gore right there that just just didn't occur to her at all to talk about. Open. Mom, get in. There's no more putting this off. Your dad is the devil and you're the antichrist. I'm supposed to accept it. But sex with Satan or anyone? Okay. So already the mom is actually, I guess, the uh, one who slept with Satan. She is the child. And so it's creating already this depiction that Satan has a, a child of flesh. We all know that Satan wants, like, listen, the devil normalizes these things, guys, because People, he likes to prey on people that don't know the Bible. And he likes to prey on people that don't even believe in God. So they'll look at these things and these shows and they'll be like, oh, that looks entertaining. That looks super fun. But really, it's demonic. Like, Okay, again, you can point at something and say, it's demonic. It's demonic. It's demonic. It's bad. It's evil. It's demonic. But you can't. You're not explaining why it's bad. You're just saying it's demonic. So here's the question. If you, as a Christian, are worshiping a God who is all-powerful and also wants everybody to be saved, then your God has the ability to protect everybody from this stuff. Christians should be able to watch this show and be perfectly entertained with no issue whatsoever because your God should work as a bulwark. Non-Christians who work the show shouldn't uh, who watch the show shouldn't be at any threat either because God should be more powerful than Satan, right? God should have every ability to protect those people. And if God is all-knowing and all-loving and all-powerful, then not only should he have the ability to protect them from this kind of demonic influence, but on top of that, they should already be protected because a being that is all-knowing and all-powerful logically cannot have desires. Desires specifically are things we want that can be obtained at one point, but we can obtain anything at any point if we are all powerful. The only thing that stops you from obtaining something you desire is either having a different uh, opposed desire, in which case you desire that other thing more, or there being a physical bulwark of some kind, not having enough money, not having enough time, etc. 
God has infinite time. The concept of money means nothing to him. And whichever desire he desires most is the one thing that he desires. And that thing should and will manifest itself. That is logically how an all-powerful, all-knowing deity would function. So if an all-powerful, all-knowing deity wants people to be saved, then guess what? Logically, they would already be saved. Unless there's something else on that agenda. Really, it really is. Let's keep going. Please allow me to introduce myself. Come to your father, Damien. Huh. You're a girl. The future is female. Nice to meet you. Where have you been, my old The future is female. Okay? Feminism statement. It, yeah, and o okay. Is she trying to say feminism's bad? Ma'am, if feminism's bad, then do me a favor. Kindly shut the fuck up and never vote. If feminism's bad, then please do not reap the benefits that feminism has ever given you. Go back to the kitchen, make a sandwich, and contemplate what other things you could be doing with your life if society didn't fuck you so bad. But... I know you're not going to do that because we live in a society where women speaking is much more accepted. And that's a good thing. Feminism is a good thing. You being able to have an opinion and put it out on the internet, that is a good thing. And it was given to you because feminists fought for the rights of future generations. If you do not like feminism, then do not utilize the benefits that have been given to you by it. Bye. The metaphysical realm. It's not hell, but it's got the essentials. Hey, everybody. This is my daughter. Kiss her ass or I'll slaughter your children. Okay, guys. So these are demonic. These are demonic representations behind them. Um, yeah, there's just demons. And? Um, demons. Okay, demons. Look at the um, symbolism here on the um, the carpet. You can see that it is sort of like rep represent representing, excuse me, masonry. We know that anything checkerboard. Really? Really? Masonry? We're doing that? This is just call for an uprising. This is this is just fem call for an uprising. This is just fem call for an uprising. Everything's satanic. Everything's demonic. Everything is bad. Uh, everything I see is evil. Look at all the evil. Like, look, there's literally demons here, and you are staring at a fucking carpet. Typically black and white patterned um, stands for mas uh, Masonic symbols. And if we go to the back here a little bit, you can see that these like they're like kind of like in this pit here, um, which looks super demonic as well. And he, uh, here are those demonic entities that I was telling you guys. This pit looks super demonic. It literally just looks like a small Grand Canyon. Unless you want to call the Grand Canyon like Satan's vagina or something. I, I don't think that that's just super demonic merely by being a pit. It's about right here. And let's keep going. Okay, so we already see some sexual symbolism. Look at the goat. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the goat Baphomet. Um, Baphomet, whatever. I don't really care to say it accurately at this point, but I will put a picture here on the screen so you see the normalization of the goat there. When we dated, okay. Inside someone's corpse. You had an unfinished dolphin tattoo. Don't be a snob. Oh. She said, I lied to protect you. She sounds like... What I said. Okay, so already this is another form of demon possession, right? The grandmother in the air holding out her hands, basically symbolizing the cross, uh, blaspheme right there. Um, we have or just T posing for dominance. Oh my god, I have like the blood. You realize that like all of this is being done tongue in cheek, right? Ma'am, you are aware that the entire point of a show like this is to make fun of you. you you're aware of that, right? Like the the goal, the butt of the joke, is you and people like you. People that will freak out about every tiny little thing and call it evil, satanic, demonic, etc. You are the butt of that joke. You, you are aware of that, right? You making this entire video freaking out about it. That's probably part of their advertisement strategy. You are you are engaging in a marketing scheme right now. Congratulations. Uh, the eye, the, the the decomposition, the the body parts coming out, sticking out, all of that. Rabbiteer's blog. Thank you very much for giving your points for an owl. Owl. Demonic, satanic. One eye symbolism. Okay, so we're gonna go back onto. So you see how her eyes are black. Blackout. When you black out, that means a demonic entity has taken full control of your of your being of your.
Excuse me, what? Ex excuse me, what? You blacking out means that that demons are controlling your body. You you sincerely believe that? If somebody gets drunk and blacks out, that that's that's demon possession. To to you, if someone disassociates, that's that's demon possession to you. Oh my fucking god! Who is this woman? What is this? What is this take? If you're going to do media analysis, at least be consistent. Yeah. Denon123, thank you very much for the follow. I just don't... I don't get it. I don't understand. Why would you... Why Why would you even go down this particular rabbit hole? Okay, you know what? We're just going to continue? We're just going to continue. your body so blackout right here representation i want to go a little bit further okay so right here at the scene we are seeing demon possession this is actually a specific demon that causes people to elevate up into the air no shit sherlock it's also a, pl a play on the exorcist this is literally just a play on the movie the exorcist this is a specific demon he specifically elevates you? No, it this is this is just the exorcist. This is literally just that movie being played for laughs. Okay, this is real. This is an actual spirit that's behind this that causes people to elevate up into the air. So this happens during rituals. This Wait. also happens during delivery. Wait, you think that's real? You think this really happens to people? You think people literally levitate off of beds? Ma'am, I'm gonna need some evidence. I'm gonna need something. Some e no, no, no. Bless your fucking heart. I'm gonna need at least a crumb of evidence that demon possessions are real. And also that people actually hecking levitate during them please and thank you ma'am i i i don't i do not understand i do not understand what this is a specific demon the great arch de arc demon lifties he also gives piggyback rights. He also costs two black mana and five colorless mana. Uh, however, you can do Convoke uh, and make all of your uh, all of your white creatures bow down, uh, and then the demon will be summoned. It'll be great. Yeah. Uh, but he was printed a long time ago, uh, so he's only a 5-5 five five with flying and, and no real other effect uh, because Wizards of the Coast was scared of powerful cards back then. Um, but Umtush says, yeah, and Lift D his, his name is Lift D's. His name was Lift D's. Middle name Ligma. Differences. If that specific person has that demonic spirit, you will see people elevate into the air. I'm their, sure their backs you will. will bend and it, it's it's super it's spirits. It's demonic. But as you guys can see on the show, they're trying to like normalize it and make it seem like, oh, this is something good to watch. This is entertainment. It's not. It's demonic. Remember, the eyes are the are the gates to your soul and to your heart. So Ma'am, do you have a tattoo? Did you are aware that like there's a whole thing in Leviticus about those, right? You're you're aware of that. As, as, I just figured you'd need to know. We have to guard our eyes. So watching things like this is not something I believe Christians should be watching. Um, people who are not Christians, you can take this as a warning if you want to still watch it. Um, I'm not going to pound someone with truth. I'm just going to simply post it. And you guys do what you must and what you will with what I'm revealing, okay? Okay. So we'll just laugh at you. Is this thing biblical or the media? So already we have a sacrifice going on here. That man that was about to sacrifice her was actually the father, which was Satan. So Satan is her father, okay? You are aware that that happened in the Bible too with a with a man of God, right? Like that Abraham sacrifice was a thing in the Bible. You, I sincerely hope you remember that because that was literally ordained by God. But okay. So he's about to sacrifice her, and then this is the mother. Hands off my daughter. Hands off my daughter. Now we're doing it. Oh great, my parents are here. I'm a chicken now. Okay, so if you guys are unfamiliar, this is a sacrificing table, okay? And this is symbolism right here. Yeah, you guys see the corpses right here that have already been sacrificed. You can actually see, like, a little bit of blood here. And there is some sort of body over here. He is looks dead. And then just people casually drinking, just about to walk away. This was a ritual, and people actually do this. This actually takes place. This is real. Um, And so...
yeah, people are stupid in real life. Congratulations, you've discovered human beings. Oh yeah, you see just the symbolism right there. He was gonna sacrifice her on that table. These are things that take place. People are still being sacrificed and killed for demons and the devil. That was what they called a party. So there you guys have it. Super demonic. Um, I, I wouldn't recommend to watch it, but I always like making videos like this because it shows really, um, it actually helps people to increase their knowledge on symbolism and on things that are not of God because you'd be surprised how many Christians are actually tempted to watch stuff like this. When I posted my video about the game, the cult of lamb, I was just surprised about how many people that said they were Christians that said it was okay to play that game. It was also sort of like this very... Yeah, again, if you're Christian, your God should be strong enough to protect you. I, I just, I'm sorry. I, I don't, I don't see this as an alarming thing. Even when I was a Christian, I wouldn't have seen it as an alarming thing. Like, you should have enough faith in your God that he can protect you from shit that you can be entertained by anything. It doesn't matter. It, 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 it doesn't and shouldn't matter. Either your God is impotent or does not have your best interests at heart. One of the two. Take your pick. But either way, you're going to find yourself disappointed in, your, in, 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 in him. So, so let's not. And I don't really think we're going to get much more out of that video. I, I don't. I, I don't. I'm curious what's in the comment section here. I want to see. So there's so much hate in the comment. I actually absolutely love that you brought light to this demonic show and agenda. So I love the video. Just subscribe. By the way, keep doing what you're doing. Love that you're shining a light on this. Uh, the devil ain't even hiding more. I haven't laughed that hard in a while. I've been on the fence for a while because of woke Disney. Okay, I don't need to read the rest of that comment. <laughs> All I wanted to see was a reaction of a show, not a breakdown of symbolism. Oof. I'll get burned, I guess. What's next? They're going to normalize potions, spells, and warlocks. <sighs> oh my god. Anyways. She didn't even do a breakdown of symbolism. She was just like, this is Masonic, and bye. Good analyze. I won't watch it. Better to pray to God. Take walks outside and go to church. Oh my god, what a what a fucking boring life you have to live. There was a there was once upon a time where I would be willing to approach stuff like this with as much nuance as possible. Now I'm just gonna look at that and go, dear God, how fucking boring. How fucking boring. Anyways. That was that. I have never covered this channel before. Ow, I don't want to click that. I have never covered this channel before. But looking at the videos that are on the channel right now, Peppa Pig Gone Gay, Christian Mom Reacts. I think I might have to. I think I might have to. Okay. Okay, fine. Fine. I guess that's the thing we're going to be doing going forward. Yay! I can't wait until the inevitable response video she does on me where she talks about me using a female avatar and how that's definitely me normalizing the, the evil, gay, trans, woke agenda. Yay, my favorite. It's gonna be, it's gonna be great. Anyways, as always, everybody, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I am just, just tired. I am just tired. The Satanic Panic was so long ago. Why do we have to go through it again? Why does every generation have to repeat the mistakes of the last one? I can't wait for there to be another round of people saying that Pokemon is evil. It's just gonna be swell. As always, everybody, insert end of video tagline here. Oh my god. So plenty of Christians consume content that is satanic and are just fine. Yep. Almost as if all the freaking out is worthless and dumb. Oh my god. I need something that's gonna actually, like, spin my brain meats a little better. <sighs> Chat, do you think Satan is an ass or a tits guy? I think he's a thigh guy. 
I think he's a thigh guy. Anyways, let's talk about eight reasons to believe in God. Because that's certainly going to be a very interesting episode that we've never tackled before. And we've never talked about this before on my channel ever in the history of ever. Yay. Anyways, as always, let's get into the fan art section first. This first one here is from Feather Boa Uber Mangaka. Said first legit fan art that wasn't just a meme template. Titled The Life Cycle of a Surus Slime. Had the idea of Slime Girl Booba be, uh, being budding slime Cirruses, and they drop off when ready to emerge into the world. Not overly proud of this piece, but practice is practice. Well, that's 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 how we make more slimes. I literally just pull off a tit and drop it on the ground, and there you go. Secondary slime Cirrus. Don't tell Mr. Stoffelis. The last one, next one we have here is from Toxy Peach. My hyper accurate Cirrus fan art. I have short term memory loss. I'm moving on. The next one we have is from Kidderdoodle, uh, Kidderdoodle. Work in progress of Cirrus giving chat permission to become gay frogs. <laughs> yes, chat, you may become frogs. I've seen the final of this, and I can't wait to actually show it. I think it'll be in the very next episode. I'll, no, it'll be in two episodes from now is when the final version of this will be shown. As always, everyone, thank you all for your fan art submissions. If you want your fan art to be shown in a future video, the best way to do so is to drop it in the fan art section of the Discord. With that all said, let's go ahead and get into the video itself. Uh, I'm not fond of frogs. Could I just be gay? Sorry, you only get one. You only get one. Bible, the first one you've never heard of. It's called Circa Sept. I need to play it from there. I hit the wrong button. Beep. Today we're going to talk about eight reasons to believe in God and the Bible. The first one you've never heard of, it's called Circa Septin Rhythms. Every one of us is programmed with a body clock. A, a circadian rhythm? That, that's a reason to believe in God? The, 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 little, the little biological clock thing that you know, tells you when to wake up and fucks with your ability to, to feel good when you sleep? That's a reason to believe in God. That's that's literally just a thing that came about because of evolution. That's just human biology. That what? That body clock still is being very slow. We are going to increase this speed greatly. Still functions if we were to lock ourselves up in a cave for many days. In fact, researchers have done this. And I find that people, even when they're cut off from all time cues, no light and dark cues, no newspapers, no television, no wristwatches, no cell phones, these individuals still stay on a circadian rhythm. Circa meaning about, DN referring to a day. So it's about a 24 hour rhythm. It's best to take that rest until the next morning or a rest on the weekly cycle. But beyond the circadian rhythm, we also have weekly rhythms. They're called circa septin rhythms. Okay. We in humanity all march to a seven day week. Every culture throughout the world that I'm aware of still adheres to a weekly cycle of seven days. And there's times when humanity has tried to change that. The French tried to make everything metric, including the week, and tried to change it into a 10-day week with 10 hours, 100 minutes in each hour, 100 seconds in each minute. And the mental institutions filled up because the decade, which is what they called the week, led to decadence and everything fell apart. The, the decade led to decadence? That, okay, that feels like misinformation. That feels like misinformation. I'm not 100% certain, but give it... Okay, let's see here. If you had... Let's pull out the calculator. Let's do it. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, cool. So you have a 24-hour day times the 60 minutes times the 60 seconds. So you have 86,400 seconds. So if we tried to do that to 100 minutes and 100 hours, that wouldn't work. You 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 could not break that down to metric the way it works. I'm I'm sorry, that's awkward. I don't I don't know if that's a thing that fucking happened. Hold on, hold on. I have to see here. Did the French try to change days to metric? He's wrong. Your circadian rhythm can get thrown off by being bored enough with the easiest way to show uh, that being solitary isolation. Yep. Uh, if they changed the length of a second, it could have worked. They did try to decimalize time. 
One calendar redesign came from the French Revolution. Revolutionaries uh, decreed the first year of the revolution as year one, and they made the week 10 days long. This calendar endured for more than a decade, lasting until Napoleon crowned himself emperor. Wait. So that so the change only happened because of literally a change of management? Uh, okay. Sure. That that feels like that's a useless piece of info now. A lot of people think, well, humans marched to a seven-day week because somehow it started early in civilization and we just hung on to that. Uh, but why is it that flies have a seven-day rhythm? Why is Okay, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Why did humans have a seven-day week? Ba, 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 da, ba, 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 ba. The week's origin is generally associated with the ancient Jews and the biblical account of creation, according to which God labored for six days and rested on the seventh. Religion. The, the answer is religion. The answer is religion. So why is it that flies have a seven-day rhythm? What does that even mean? Is it that algae have a seven-day rhythm? It what does what does seven-day rhythm mean here? Like, there are some flies that have a seven-day life? What does rhythm mean here? That's It feels like a useless statement. Plants have a seven-day rhythm. Those things uh, can't read the Bible. The lunar month isn't divisible by seven. Those things can't read the Bible. Oh! You're not pulling information from a scientific documentary. You're pulling information from apologetics. Oh, this is like identifying your ass by pointing to your ass and then describing it with your ass. It's 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 all your ass. It all comes back to your ass. I can't learn things about the rest of the world. I'm only learning about your ass. There's nothing happening here. This is all circular. Great. The year is not divisible by seven. There's nothing in the planets that we can find. And so the question is, why seven? What? Be because ancient Jewish people. I mean, that, there, there you go. Boom. <laughs> sorry. I'm, I'm sorry to I'm sorry to cuck everybody, but that's that's the reason. It brings me back to that very ancient council in the Bible where God said. That of course, it's it's back to that. It, what's your next reason? You have another reason? Do you, do you have another one? I'd like to go to your reason number two. Your estimate the remedy. Algae and no, no, no. on the market. It's fascinating that we have these seven-day rhythms. You say, well, humans, because we've just adapted to that. No, no, no. The journal that is called Chronobiology International talks about the fact that they have found algae have seven-day rhythms, plants have seven-day rhythms, fish have seven-day rhythms, birds. In Okay, so what is it called? Because we've just adapted to that. No, no, no. The journal that is called Chronobiology International. Chronobiology International. Maybe they'll describe what a fucking rhythm is. That'll be helpful. All right. 587 views, 18 citations and cross-references. Okay, from Alan E. Reinberg from University of Texas. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Uh, the fact-finding expedition explores the perspectives and knowledge of the origin and functional relevance of the seven... Seven de seven de domain of the biological time structure with special reference to human beings. These biological rhythms are displayed at various levels of organization in diverse species, from unicellular sea al uh, algae to fish and birds and mammals, including man, under natural as well as artificial environmental conditions. Nonetheless, very little is known about their. Uh, about the derivation, functional advantage, adaptive value, synchronization, and potential uh, clinical reference. About 7D cosmic cycles are seemingly too weak, and the 6D work 1D rest command from... Co Ex Explain. Expl why, why is that censored? Why is that censored? Is this? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. 
Is this... Is this actually a reputable journal? Am I am I incorrect here? Hold on, citations. I'm curious. Three cite it's been it's been cited three times. Once in a study about alcohol and melatonin. Once in a study about melatonin. Once in a study about circadian time structure. Otherwise, it is all references to other publishers. I'm going to go out on a limb and say I don't care about this source. <laughs> maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm incorrect. Maybe there's somebody, some researcher in, in the chat or someone who uh, is, is more well-versed in this who can tell me that I'm actually wrong for dismissing them based on what I'm seeing here, but I'm, I'm not seeing anything that I care about. Chronobiology International. That's the journal. Chronobiology International. Let's see here. Doesn't even sound like a full title. I don't I don't know. It is a peer-reviewed scientific journal that covers all aspects of bio, uh, biological and medical rhythm research. Uh, let's see. American Association for Medical Chronobiology and the Society of Light Treatment and Biological Rhythms. I'm not seeing anything about any controversies or anything like that in here. But again, the actual paper itself only had three citations. So I feel like something should come after that. Uh, why not use a fact checker or something on it? Because you can do a fact checker on news organizations, but when it comes to journals, the only way you can measure them is based off of um, the impact they've had in scientific field, which can be a lot more myopic. You have to look at the amount of times the different studies and different uh, articles have been cited, uh, the ways in which they've been cited, uh, the difference between citations and refutations that happen with them. It's not as easy as just looking at the overall stuff where a news uh, source is considered. But looking at the source itself, let's grant it. Let's grant that the entire thing is right. Let's grant that the entire study is correct. That there's nothing sus about it whatsoever. Congratulations. All you have said is human biology be real neat biology is a real neat thing yo that that's as far as you've gotten it could very well be that the reason that ancient people created uh, a seven day week that we adhere to today was entirely because we already had that biological predisposition but i don't know the thing is i don't think they know either but they're willing they're willing to say that they do talks about the fact that they have found algae have seven day rhythms plants have seven day rhythms fish have seven day rhythms birds and even mammals how is it that all these animals have these seven day rhythms and how did the ancient hebrews thousands of years ago know this even when so here's the thing if we all have similar biological structure in that we are all eukaryotes right and the reason that ancient societies built the seven-day structure for us to work with was because that was what was being observed through their own rhythms back then, and other animals would have those rhythms as well. It's very easy to go, hey, biology did a thing, and then we did something informed by that biology because we had an instinct that we were working off of that we couldn't quite explain at, the, at that point in time. When it talked about the Sabbath day, it said that not only were humans not to work, but not even their cattle. Now, they told us that God wrote it on tables of stone that we now call the Ten Commandments. Tables, now, the of, tables of stone? You mean tablets? Tab tablets of stone? Tables of stone? I've never heard them called tables of stone. Reason 
is something that actually has to do with what the greatest skeptic on planet Earth, Richard Dawkins, and I have in common. Now, he was he was discussing with a Christian man by the name of John Lennox as they were going back and forth. Richard Dawkins is the greatest skeptic on Earth? That's That's your bar? Oh, man. This is awkward. John Lennox asked Richard Dawkins a fascinating question. He said, do you ever feel the desire to worship? And I want you to notice what Dawkins said. I think that when you consider the beauty of the world and you wonder how it came to be what it is, you're naturally overwhelmed with a feeling of awe, a feeling of admiration. You almost feel the desire to worship something. I feel this. I recognize that other scientists such as Carl Sagan feel this, Einstein felt it. We all of us share a kind of religious reverence for the beauties of the universe, for the complexities of life, for the sheer magnitude of the cosmos, the sheer magnitude of geological time. You know, I have the same experience of Richard Dawkins. Then when I really contemplate nature, when I think about the complexity of life. Okay, so this is, this is just look at the trees. This is, the, this is the look at the trees conversation. Look at the trees. Aren't they so complex? God did it. Brinks, thank you very much for redeeming your points for... Nada. You fucking degen. This is a This is a very, very wordy version of look at the trees. I don't give a shit about the trees. I don't. They're neat. I'm sure there is somebody who is more studied in flora and fauna that thinks they're more neat than I do. But I don't look at them and go, oh, God. No, I, I don't. I, I look at them and think, oh, tree. I'm still looking up at the, the hole that I patched up in my roof where a tree branch fell through like a pencil and tried to kill me. I mean, I, I, just, I just don't care. I don't see a reason to look at it as anything other than there is a tree there and there is some neat biology happening with that tree. I, the magnitude of the universe, I actually have a desire to worship. Now, I recognize many people don't have this today because they're too busy on cell phones or uh, watching television or on computers. So they're not. Oh, boo hoo. We can't do the look at the trees thing because people are looking at cell phones. Jesus Christ. Nel Saru, thank you very much for getting your points, friend. Oh, well thinking about the great mystery of life, but Richard Dawkins thinks about it. Carl Sagan, Einstein, all felt the very same thing, this desire to worship. And the Bible actually says in Romans chapter one that God put this inside of us. That when And of course, it is written on their hearts, blah, 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 blah. And people have no reason not to believe and they get to go to hell because it was written on their hearts the whole time. I, yes? When we contemplate nature that we know that there is a God and even Richard Dawkins senses it. And there was another man by the name of Anthony Flew, one of the foremost philosophical atheists for maybe 50 years. And Anthony Flew himself ended up writing a book called There Is a God. Notice what he said. My departure from atheism was not occasioned by a new phenomenon or argument. Over the last two decades, my whole framework of thought has been in a state of migration. This was a consequence of my continuing assessment of the evidence of nature. When I finally came to recognize the existence of a God, it was not a paradigm shift because my paradigm shift remains as Plato in his Republic scripted his Socrates to insist we must follow the argument wherever it leads. Okay, cool. So you're just pointing out that Antony Flew uh, became a theist. That, that doesn't tell... He became a theist. Cool. That doesn't tell me why I should become a theist. That doesn't, that doesn't give me any... Flew finally came to the conclusion that there is a god based on the evidence of nature. Number three hap... Okay, cool. So this was just very wordy look at the trees. It's not very convincing. Look at the trees. Okay, cool. There are trees. They have complex biology. That's cool. That's what happens when evolution does its thing. Next. It's to do with consciousness, but it also has to do with faith. Now, faith, obviously it's a religious word, so we're gonna give it a religious definition. No, it's not. It's, a, it's, it's just a word that means confidence in something. Faith is just confidence. It doesn't have to be a religious word, dear God. That's given in Hebrews chapter 11, verse one, where it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So the Bible says that faith- Yeah, that's literally you saying that having faith in something is equivalent to believing something purely because you want to believe it. If it's the evidence of something that's not been proven to you, the evidence in faith, the evidence is your faith. I'm here to tell you right now, if we're talking about religious stuff, faith is not evidence. I I'm sorry, it it's, it's just not. Faith is a statement. You believe something. Cool. You believing something isn't evidence of something. If you believe that the Twin Towers were knocked down because the government installed thermite bombs, that is not evidence that 9-11 that, that was an inside job done by President George W. Bush. I'm sorry. That's not how that works. Your belief in something is not evidence of it. Faith is believing you have evidence for something you've never seen. Now, I've never seen God... So I, I do believe in him, and so I have faith. I, also, the Big Bang. Did anybody ever see the Big Bang? No. We, okay, so here's the difference. When we're talking about 
God. We are talking about something that is categorically outside of our scope. It is categorically outside of our ability to see or observe. If you want to believe that, that's fine. But to say that that... To say that that is the same thing as the Big Bang... So Every single time that I every single time that I look away, it starts tracking your face. I love you very much. Kindly fuck off my VTuber model. <laughs> oh dear God. Uh, okay. Anywho. <sighs> You know, this is this is a category error. God is a supernatural being. He is he is outside of our scope to see, to feel, to touch, etc. The Big Bang, however, is a historical event. It is an event that we have been able to see the reverberations of over the course of time. We've been able to use mathematical calculation to find what we would expect to see at the T equals zero event of the Big Bang. These are not the same thing, not by any long shot. And belief in one based off of statistical ability, mathematical ability, and belief in the other based on belief. I mean, faith is your belief and confidence in something, so it's belief in the belief in the belief in the belief in the belief of it. It's not getting us anywhere. No, so if somebody believes in that, they may believe they have evidence, but faith is believing you have evidence for something you've never seen. There's a number of things that humans believe, whether Christian, atheist, Buddhist, Hindu, everybody believes in something they haven't seen. Now, think about consciousness. Conscious. So the reason we have, the reason we come to is why. Before we talk about consciousness, because I already know what's going to happen with this one. Why do we believe things we haven't seen? Well, typically because there's evidence pointing to it. You didn't see a person commit a murder, but you have plenty of evidence that they committed the murder. The uh, blood stains that were on the carpet. That's a thing that believes that you, you can you know that Annie was murdered. The blood stains were there. She was struck. You heard a crescendo. There you go. You have some evidence of Annie's murder. And now you know that she's not OK. But. That's not the same thing we're talking about God. With God, we are looking at random things and then ascribing them to him. Problem is, we can do that with any creator deity or any creation concept. Every single one of these things is equal parts evidence for the Christian God as it is evidence for a deistic God. It's not evidence of a particular God, and it's even not evidence of a God in general. It's evidence of a creation event, which could be caused by random chaos or by a deity or by some other thing that we're not considering because we are humans with limited minds and scope. Fire Sparks, thank you very much for redeeming your points for an owl. Owl. That said, the takeaway from that isn't that you shouldn't believe in God or anything like that. The takeaway from that whether you're an atheist or not, is that the honest answer about how the universe began is, I don't know. You believe that it's a deity. That's a valid belief. But you don't know it. You can't claim that knowledge. Knowledge is what happens when you have a belief that is confirmed to be true. It's not a thing that's been confirmed to be true. You believe it. I believe something different. One of us is wrong. We do not know which one. I'm okay with that. I'm okay looking at life as a journey where I'll figure out those things. I don't need to sit here and be as arrogant as someone would be to say that they most certainly know what happened at the beginning of the universe. But let's get to the brain meets bit. This is something that, according to evolution, there was once a beginning of the universe. And then over time, matter slowly came together and began to have self-replicating organisms. And those self-replicating organisms, which were made of matter, matter over the course of time be began to be able to think about itself, which was matter. Matter, if you give it enough time, will start thinking about itself. Now you say, Chad, that's a pretty simplistic understanding of all this. Maybe yeah. so, but the fact is nobody's ever seen it happen. In so uh, can we talk about the Miller and Urey experiments for a second? Nobody's seen it happen, except we've been able to actually do... Uh, we've been able to replicate old earth conditions and create some of the essential amino, ac uh, amino acids required for the building blocks of life. That's a thing we've been able to do. These are old experiments that we've done, and we've been able to do more since the Miller and Urey experiments.
Fire Sparks, thank you for doing your points for an owl. Owl. I'm not going to be able to do that poll right now, stop, as I'm in the middle of a video. But the fact that matter came together and produced organisms of a single cell that could not think for themselves. And eventually, we know one thing that ended up happening. We know that there was a cell that consumed another cell, and as opposed to processing it in a digestive fashion, they ended up forming a more symbiotic bond. The first multicellular organism was produced. These are things we know have happened. These are things, these are things we've been able to replicate with science. What we have here is a classic God of the Gaps fallacy, where somebody goes, hey, look at all of these things. These definitely could not be explained by science or haven't been explained by science, so it must be God. And it's true. The Miller and Urey experiments have not been fully conclusive. We have been not, not been able to fully synthesize things like DNA or RNA from them. We've only been able to do very baseline things. But the fact that we've been able to do those baseline things tells us enough tells us that we're on the right track. Whether or not we're fully wrong or fully right, we don't know. Whereas when you look at things through the lens of the Christian Bible, and only through the lens of the Christian Bible, then you don't know if you're on the right track. You're just reading a book that tells you you are, and you have to have faith that it is the right track the entire time. I'm sorry. I, I just don't buy it. And to me, if it did happen, it would sound closer to a miracle than to science. How would it sound closer to a miracle than science? Can you please explain? And in fact, to believe what the Bible says in Genesis chapter one, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I think it's actually easier to believe in a creator that could make dust and minerals and, and these kind of things come together to think than by random chance, matter could start thinking about it. So you, you just admitted you're only believing it because it's easier. Okay, that's the, that is the most weak minded stuff. If you believe something because it is easier and more simplistic for you, then you are not trying to find truth. You are not trying to find the truth of the matter. You are exhibiting laziness. It is easier for you to believe something than it is for you to investigate it. This is true of everything human beings have. This is the problem we have with shit like the QAnon movement. This is the problem we have with shit with people who say that like, oh, the election was stolen. It's easier for them to believe that based off of a handful of facts than to look at the breadth of facts that we have, all information that is available there to find out why they could possibly be wrong. I, I, I do not like this framing. This framing of like, well, I find it easier to believe this. I find that I don't care. Why should I give a shit what you think is easier to believe? Self. But I gotta say, it takes faith for me to believe that, and it takes faith for somebody to believe that. It wasn't done that way. Number four. Cool, so we're on equal footing. Then stop being arrogant about yours being right. It has to do with archaeology. Archaeology has many historical verifications for certain people in the Bible and places. And we give some evidence also of the events that took place in some of the Bible. One man by the name of Sir William Mitchell Ramsey, he was taught in some of the historical critical method of the German school of thinking, where they thought that basically the New Testament was not historically reliable, that its points of history just couldn't, couldn't be verified, wasn't trustworthy. And so he himself began to believe that. He became an archeologist anyway, began to study the rock records for himself. And what he discovered as he went to the actual historical locations that were written, out, written about in scripture, he came to the very opposite conclusion of what he had been taught in school. And notice what he said. He said, speaking of the book of Luke, he said, Luke is a historian of the first rank. Not merely are his statements of fact trustworthy, this author should be placed along with the very great of historians. Luke's history is unsurpassed in respect of his trustworthiness. Okay, so Sir William Mitchell Ramsey said that. Why should I care about his testimony? Let's see here. Let's take a look as to why. He was a Scottish archaeologist and a New Testament scholar. Let's see here. Let's do a little bit of research. He was uh, he became the foremost authority in his day in the history of Asia Minor and leading scholar in the study of the New Testament. Ramsey was educated in the uh, Tabingan School of Thought, which doubted the reliability of the New Testament, but his extensive archaeological and historical studies convinced him of its historical accuracy. From the post of Professor of Classical Art in Architecture at Oxford, he was appointed to the Regis Professor of Humanity in Aberdeen. Knighted in 1906 to mark his distinguished services to the world of scholarship, Ramsey also gained 
gained three honorary fellowship of uh, fellowships from Oxford colleges, nine honorary doctorates from British continental and North American universities, and became an honorary member of almost every association devoted, devoted to archaeology and research. He was one of the original members of the British Academy and was awarded the gold medal of Pope Leo XIII in 1893 and the Victorian medal of the Royal Geographical Society in 1906. Ooh. So he actually is a very well-renowned archaeologist. So, let's go ahead and do the granting the premise method. Let's grant that the majority of everything in the New Testament is historically accurate, or as, as accurate as a historical piece can be. Remember that there are people that we know are real, who have actually existed, uh, who have had very sensationalized stories told about them. The individual stories may not be real, but the person they come together to describe is so, if we grant that the New Testament is real, then we grant, or is 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 accurate, at least to that degree, then we grant that the locations it's talking about are real. We grant that several of the people it's talking about are real. We grant that a person named Luke in the Middle East somehow uh, is real, and Luke was definitely his name, most, most, total, most totally. We could actually try not strawmanning that. We could steel man that. His name might not have been Luke, and it didn't have to be Luke. Whatever the historian's name was who wrote the book of Luke, let's go ahead and grant them that they are at least somewhat accurate. What this means is we have a collection of stories written about things people saw and believed. That is evidence that a bunch of historical things happened, like Jesus Christ existing, uh, the cult of priestess existing. Um, there's things that we can find there, like Paul spreading the uh, gospel of the early church, um, Peter founding some of the early church stuff as well. We can find a lot of that by looking through the Bible. But you know what we don't find? Awkwardly. Evidence that Jesus was God. If you take the entirety of the New Testament to be as factual as possible, then you find a group of people who believed wholeheartedly that he was a deity and put it to paper. And that is an astounding thing. And it's very noteworthy from a historical uh, standpoint. But what it is not is evidence that he is in fact a deity. Because there are people right now who are written about right now, who people think are deities right now and write about it as we speak. And that is not evidence that those people are deities or blessed by their God or any other. The existence of a historically accurate document that claims that somebody is God is not evidence they are God. It is evidence that the author believed that. And I am willing to take it as far as that. I am willing to grant everything that is being said by Sir Mitchell Ramsey. And the conclusion we come to at that point is that people historically believed. There was a group of people that believed Jesus was the Son of God and was the Messiah. I am willing to believe they believed that. That doesn't give me a reason to believe that their belief was true. We have historical verification for people like Pontius Pilate. We have so many people that are verified through the rock records that it is absolutely incredible. And if you're willing to look into the evidence for history and archaeology and nature for yourself rather than just what you're told by other people, you may come to the same conclusion that Sir William Mitchell Ramsey came to. Or you'll come to the conclusion that despite that breadth of evidence, you don't have evidence that that is a deity. You have evidence that people believed that. And that's interesting. That's cool. That's useful information that does not get us to a God belief. Number five has to do with one of the questions that many skeptics have lobbed against the Bible, and that has to do with the telephone game. Maybe you played that game where you have someone make a statement, like they'll whisper into somebody's ear, the weather is beautiful today in the Carpathian Mountains. And then it goes from person to person, whispered from ear to ear. And when you finally get to the end of the room, inevitably the last person says something like, purple bunnies look nice in the sun, right? It always ends up like that. And so people have said, well, maybe the Bible was written thousands of years ago, which it was, and maybe it's been totally changed over the last two millennia. And looking at that sounds like a good argument. Because the oldest portions of the Old Testament we had, some of them were about 1,000 to maybe 1,100 years old. So what about another 1,000 years before that? Well, we didn't know for sure. 
until the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls by a young Muslim boy by the name of Muhammad Eddib was a goat herder. He was walking through the area of Qumran and he threw a rock into a cave. He heard some pottery shatter and investigating, he found what began to be known as the Dead Sea Scrolls. Now, archaeologists could actually test head to head with the modern Bible, looking at a, a version of the Bible that was over a thousand, maybe a thousand years earlier than some of the oldest manuscripts. And they could see, was, was it like, maybe it was like the telephone game and all the Christians were just dead wrong. Maybe the Jews were just way off, but now we could know. And the Dead Sea Scrolls were revolutionary in that we could discover that the Bible, since the time of Jesus, was virtually unchanged. And so, really? So the Council of Nicaea never happened? That the Council of Nicaea didn't happen at all? All the books that were taken out of biblical canon? Never a thing. The Bible being completely unchanged at all? Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Did the... Da, 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 da. Let's take a read here. The Dead Sea Scrolls are ancient Jewish and Hebrew religious manuscripts discovered in 1946 at the Qumran Caves in what was then mandatory Palestine, near Enfeshkna and the West Bank, on the northern shore of the Dead Sea, dating from the... 3rd century BCE to the 1st century CE. When was Job written? Job was written between the 7th and 4th centuries BCE. These are not the earliest documents. That's weird. That's interesting. Let's take a look here. Do, 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 do. Fragments with unknown provenance, physical characteristics, photographing assembly, scholarly. Uh... Let's see here. So the Dead Sea Scrolls had stuff from the Book of Psalms, Deuteronomy, First Enoch, Genesis, Isaiah, Jubilees, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, a book called From the Minor Prophets, Daniel, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Job, Tobit. That's not in the modern Bible. Kings, Samuel, Judges, Song of Songs, Ruth, Lamentations, Sirach, Ecclesiastes, and Joshua. The majority texts have found that were found among the Dead Sea Scrolls are non-biblical in nature and were thought to be insignificant for understanding the composition or canonization of biblical books. But a consensus has emerged which sees many of these as being collected by the Essene community instead of being composed by them. Scholars now recognize that some of these works were composed earlier than the Essene period when some of the biblical books were still being written or redacted for their final form. Oh, so you mean the Dead Sea Scrolls are actually the opposite of this. They are evidence of severe foundational changes in the Bible that have happened in the books that have been ripped out of the damn thing. Oh, interesting. That's cool. That's really good to know. I'm glad to know that the argument that you just had was thrown on its face by the thing you just said. Real awkward. Real weird. So we can trust that the message Jesus was reading, like in the great Isaiah scroll, as they discovered that and they could test it head to head, the same message Jesus was reading in the book of Isaiah about the suffering servant that he would become is the same message that we read when we open our Bibles today. And in actuality, I have to thank an atheist for changing my life. What ended up happening was I had an atheist make me look like an absolute fool for never having read the Bible. and. I looked like a fool because he was basically letting me know, you didn't look into this for yourself. You didn't even study this out. And it's true. I hadn't taken the time to read that book through. And I decided right then and there, I was going to go home and I was going to read the book through page by page. I was going to read the Bible through. And I have come... Good. You should do that with any religious book you, you claim to adhere to. There's a reason I wanted to be a theologian when I was a kid. I was reading my Bible desperately. Maybe Revelation's a little too many times than I should have, but that's a thing I did as a child. I'm to the conclusion, this is the most life-changing book I like to read. I've never seen anything like what I believe is the word of God. And have you taken the time? Have you tested it for yourself? Or have you just heard what other people said? Or even if you're a Christian for that matter, do, have you just taken other people's word or a pastor? We're not to do that. We are to test this book for ourselves. So I want to challenge you, whether you're a skeptic, whether you're a Muslim, a Hindu, a Buddhist, a Jew, whatever. Don't trust people around you. I want to challenge you to go right to the book itself. I agree. 
Go ahead and read the Bible. Do it. I wholly encourage you to do this. I know just as many people who were made Christians by reading their Bible as people who were made atheists by reading it. That's a gamble I'm willing to take with anybody. Have fun. Defresh 7 lit. Thank you very much for the follow. Just like that atheist did for me, and as he did that, it changed my life. And we've hit five. I'm gonna, we're going to go into the next three, which I think are the most powerful. But because we've gone long, we're going to put that in the next video right here. And when that comes out, it's going to be... So you mean I have to make a part two? You bastard! You bat I... And, and wait, hold on. The, the video's here. 20 things the Bible says about finance and, and a video about happiness. N Am I making a part two? I don't know. I What? Didn't he lie in the... T yeah, no, not only is the title a lie, but neither of these are the three other reasons. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Not... G guy, guy, you have a 103,000 subscriber channel. Okay, sure, why not? Let me reinforce something before I finish this video up, now that I've been completely cucked by the, uh, by the presenter. Whether you are a Christian, or an atheist, or somebody who has any other religion, I don't care. But don't have these just blatantly wrong reasons to believe in your literature. Every single thing that you gave me can make somebody a deist just as fast as it can make somebody a Christian. And that, despite what Ken Ham and William Lane Craig have tried to say, that does not get you one step closer to your deity. That's just as many steps away from your deity as it is steps close. I'm sorry. This has not given me any reason to change my mind, and in fact, some of these were honestly kind of disappointing to even look at and hear about. I do not think that the person who made this channel is a bad person. I don't know if he's made videos uh, talking about LGBTQ issues or, you know, the reasons that people should believe the Bible or they're going to be burning in hell. I don't know if he's done that. If he has, then that's probably a thing that I'll be covering at some point as well. But I do know that this video severely disappointed me and didn't give me what I thought it was going to give me when I read the title. But maybe it did that to you guys. Maybe you had a chance to get something out of this more than what you thought. So let me know what you got out of this in the comment section below and if you have any different answers to the questions that he had there. And the things he said are evidence of, of the Bible, reasons to believe. Who knows? Maybe you got something different out of it than I did. But as always, everybody, let me know what you think in the comment section below. And uh, yeah, insert end of video tagline here. We, we did it. We did it. So edits and fort nuts, basically. Do 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 do. All that introduced to me was a desire to sleep. I yep. I get that. Garagura as a thumb. Let's go over here and let's kill that right there. MH Dark Beast, thank you very much for the 50 bits. What is the video? Che Guevara's good looks and charm often made him difficult to interrogate. How can you justify these untruths? How can you justify your deep blue eyes? Oh, uh, well, no one's ever really commented on my eyes, so 
Anyway, let's get back to you lying on me. To me. Fuck. News reporters were also distracted. Kevin, how are the protests in Cuba? Guevara worked up a sweat with a passionate speech. The sweat trickled down his chest, leaving him oiled like a baby otter. Right, but the protest itself... Sorry, yes, ran smoothly. As smooth as his peck. Kevin, uh, apologies. Uh, the protest was tightly organized like a sweaty butter. We're gonna go to the weather now. Able to get by with just his hotness, Guevara put less effort into his politics. What is your economic policy? My policy? Yes. Yeah. Well, it's simple, baby. The policy is, uh, you cannot put money in the sea. Okay, baby. What? Uh, ask me about my biceps. Eventually, his boss, Fidel Castro, stepped uh, in. Jay, you need to stop the pretty boy stuff. You need to stop being so cute. Jay, it's not going to work on that tight outfit works on you. Stop. You have a sexy beard. You're embarrassing yourself. You have perfect ears. Kiss me. Ha! <laughs> that was the gayest shit I've seen today, and it was amazing. Anyway... Let's go ahead and go here to OBS videos and put uh, offline all. What do you mean the gayest shit? You live with Raz. Uh, I mean, yeah, you're right. Anyways, let's... What is this one? All right. Yes, I got... And then this one is... But anyway, Christmas. So, oh boy, I can't wait for the monetization roulette. I can't either. I can't either. It's my favorite. thing but anyway i guess i'm just going to be showing the breadth of my self-hatred by but first This thing, d d this this thing, that one right there. So, injections. There's plenty of different ways to do this, and each of them will affect your body differently. Even in pill form, there's multiple different types of birth control that can. We did Rouge the Vaz done, just hard to get a good boob unless you do a very large image. Just too much work. That's fair. Export Meteor. Export. Then we go over here to... Butt Nut. Genshin Impact? Oh, boy. I can't wait to go play Breath of the Waifu. Uh, boy. I 
I just need to get a cauldra complete. Bow, 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 bow. We'll be playing Goldeneye on the Switch when it comes out? Nope. I didn't like it when I was a kid, and I don't like it now. I do not think that game had good controls back then, and I don't think it has good controls now. Do you watch the Young Turks? Nope. I do not. So wasn't it the first FPS with dual analog controls? You just had to plug in. You just had to like use two controllers. Yep. 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 Where's the fighting happening? I want to go where the fighting is. I want to shoot. Want to shoot some faces. And I died. Oh. Turns out I'm bad at video games. Aha. What about Hassan? Nope. I see clips of Hassan, but I don't actually watch Hassan. There we go.
Have you seen Hassan Fish? No. I know not who that is. But, said, so yeah, just to see his clips, you're the first YouTuber I found that also does politics and philosophy. It's encouraging. Well, thank you. I do think we need more VTubers who are talking about philosophy and politics. The problem is, is that this is a niche that typically people try to go into for comfort. And philosophy and politics is not a comfortable conversation for most people. Have you met this weird guy named Ocean Keltoy? Not only have I met him, I've kicked his ass in Magic the Gathering. I need... Oh, here we go. Where is the battling happening? I need a person. Where to fight, Nat? I heard the gunfire. Aha! Son of a bitch. Do not. There's an old politics stream where he talked about pigs and punching. He rebranded. Yeah. I bet he did. <laughs> I bet he did. Oh, God. Nope, that was just instant death. When you have a thing of mixed nuts, am I the only one that just picks out the cashews? Because I just want that butter in my mouth. Do do. All right. I am going to be taking a look at a channel that I have not seen before. I'm, I'm curious where we're going to go. To just buy cashews then? No. And then the episode itself? You can't make me. You can't make me make smart decisions. And I don't want you to try. You haven't even the slightest clue. Demonic show. He specifically tagged me so you wouldn't know what I was at. That I wasn't alone in that category. Nah, fair. Fair, fair. Fair,
mixed with M&Ms. I can't have M&Ms anymore. I've tried to cut out most sugars. The Mingzi one says cashews and salads are good. It's true. The Dark Daddy, what? You finally have a break from classes? Bonbon, bon, hello! Welcome to your break. How you be? You're a present? Well, of course you're a present, Bon Bon. Plain honey roasted or sea salt cashews? Honey roasted. If I have a choice, I'd go with honey roasted. You think you're going, buddy? No. You don't get to escape. second. I'm almost dead. I should fix that. I should fix that. Game, could I have a crumb of healing? A, a crumb of heals. A small heal, please. Can, can, can heal? None of this is healing. None of this, oh, oh, oh. Delicious healing. Corn. I love corn. Ah, there we are.
Why did you microwave honey? Does ceramic go in a microwave? It can. Hey, there we go. Good old chug splash. Take this. I hear the sound effects of battle. What I want is the blood of my enemies. Okay, got the blood of my enemies. That was easy. That was easy. I don't have a that was easy button. I'm going to hide in here and I'm going to go over here. This video was exported successfully. frame size anyways let's talk about eight reasons to believe in god because that's certainly going to be a very interesting episode that we've never tackled before and we've never talked about this before on my channel ever in the history of talk about eight reasons to believe in god Anyways, as always, let's get into the fan art section first. Beep, 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 beep. export all right up the mountain I go I need to go where that thing is. I need it. I need it. Hmm. 
The idea that microwaves cook things from the inside out is not scientifically accurate. It's closer to how Bonbon bon was describing them. Microwaves just make atoms vibrate. Atoms vibrate enough, they get hot. Dead. <laughs> so do you feel like being put in a giant marshmallow would be horrible? Man, I'm sure that's somebody's fetish. No, nope, fuck it. Let's go! So Georgia wants to hold a referendum on whether or not to go to war with Russia. Russia already picked the war. Feels dumb. Russia already chose the war. That was a them decision. Gotcha. I haven't even the slightest huckleberry idea who the fuck you are. Give me your weapon. Or give me your grappler. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme, gimme. Your your grappler is not your own. It is mine. I want it.
Eat shit, buddy. Eat shit. I can't wait for my hubris to bite me in the ass. We're just going to wait right here. Fuck it. Watching a Fortnite match is like a fever dream. How so? I'm sorry, Bonbon. Bon. God, how the fuck? Somebody died. Somebody died. There's somebody about to die. Come on. God, what? Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, what? We, we annihilated each other? No, there's no way. There's no way. There's no fucking way. There's absolutely no goddamn way. <laughs> God. How? 
So the guy won because you killed each other at the same time? Yes. Yes. Oh my fucking god. I'm so upset. I'm so upset. Jesus. Jesus heckin' Christ. Oh, that's still doing his thing. Goddamn. Alright. This will be the last match. Because then I'll be able to uh, edit the last episode. And then we'll be... We'll be good. And then I'll be, I'll be sending you all to your new babysitter. Ow. You just mute? Oh, I'm still here. No audio? Only for a little bit. Jesus, the fuck is going over and over there? Deep, deep, deep. Fuck! Okay.
Doop. There we go. Boom. Boop, boop. Boop. There we go. There we go. Oh, I got killed while I was editing. Well, you know what that means. We hit the export button. And then I send you guys away. I send I send you guys away. It's it's time to go. It's time to go everybody. It's time to leave. It's time to fuck off. I love every single one of you for being here, but I am tired and it is time to go elsewhere. Is it is time for the sleep? It is time for the sleep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 